Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. The question for the morning is, why do they lock gas station bathrooms? Are they afraid someone will clean them? And think about this. One nice thing about egotists, they don't talk about other people. Hmm. Good morning, everybody. Here's Kate Smith, and God bless America. Followed by a patriot with our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Oh, thank you very much, Kate Smith. Good morning. I'm Zeb Bell at Zeb at the Ranch with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, along with some of our great advertisers, Lease Furniture Floors and More at 459 Overland and Burley, and Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Get on the route service, have your garbage picked up, 734-6969. And now, as I was gone last Thursday, and we had Sharon Hardy Miller, fill in and along with the quarterbacking of the team Gina Jameson good morning lovely lady Gina well good morning sir and how was your weekend fantastic yes it was I I want to thank the Brent Rose family and the entire committee of the Golden Spike Rodeo Wow, it was fantabulous, and I really appreciate all their effort. Well, it sounds like you had a very good time. I just wanted to tell everybody that uh, today is the first day of school in Minidook County, so buses are out and running, so please be mindful of the little ones. Yeah, I can't stress that enough on the bikes and on the sidewalks yeah. and everything, and you know how they get to pushing and playing and everything. Be careful out there. Do we have a pleasure? Uh, we do have Al on for the pledge and Mr. Michael Rogers on for the weather. All right. Good morning, Al. Go ahead with the pledge, please. Good morning, Roadrunner. Yes, sir. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You always do an exceptionally good job. Al, God bless you and Polly. Take care. You betcha. Thank Bye. you, sir. And right now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to skip on over to do our weather. Brought to you by Rock Creek Growers on the corner of Maxine Lane and Irene Streets in Kimberly. Big sale going on. 30% off all the plant materials. And check out all the fall grasses. And they're just adding more stuff all the time to this big fall sale. Where? At the corner of Maxine Lane and Irene Streets in Kimberly. You give them a call or stop in. 423-6800. Rock Creek Growers on the corner of of Maxine Lane and Irene Streets in Kimberly, and now here is MichaelRogersWeather.com. Good morning, everybody. Start of a brand spanking new week of you, me, weather on Zeb at the Ranch. Hope you had a pretty good weekend. Our weather thing for this week. When's the last time you experienced cool temperatures? How about 87 for the high today? We're going to stay in the 80s all week long with sun and clouds. Now, if you're not used to cool weather, well, that's okay. It's been hot for quite a while. But it's going to get rather comfortable here in the Magic Valley of South Central Idaho. So enjoy the day and enjoy the weather. It's the only weather you got. There you go, MichaelRogersWeather.com, the best weatherman in the country. Thank you so much. Brought to you by Rock Creek Growers on the corner of Maxine Lane and Irene Streets in Kimberly. Hey, real fast, I also want to remind you about Daryl's Cleaners at 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley, and they're going to be tickled to see me today. I've got a bag, and I'm not talking a little bitty bag. I'm talking a bag of all my rumply crumplies from the last couple 
couple of weeks. Oh, my shirts and Wranglers, you name it, I got all kinds of stuff in there. And I'm going to take it in. They'll come home looking brand spanking new. Daryl's Cleaners, the best cleaners anywhere. 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley. You stop in and see those wonderful folks today. Oh, and by the way, uh, we're very blessed here to have made the decision co oh, about four or five years ago to go with SafeLink Internet. Mm -mm -mm. Absolutely has done a wonderful job for us. And uh, check out the all-new SafeLink. No contracts required, no credit checks, uh, new high-speed Internet packages, and professional installation. Boy, when you say professional, I can back that up. They are. 677-8000. 677-8000. Tell them Zeb told you to call. SafeLink, high-speed Internet service. You get on that program today. Okay, calls are welcome and appreciated. 436-2244-1866-927-4587. You know, I have been uh, gone for a couple of days, and I want to remind you about this. This is very important. Call your friends, call your neighbors, call your relatives out of the area, whatever, to sign up for Cow Pies and Coffee Cups, my, my blog. Here's why. We're going to be turning out volume 100 in the next couple of weeks, and we're celebrating by giving away a grand prize to our lucky subscribers. Now, be sure and uh, go to my website, zebbell.com, zebbell.com, sign up for Cow Pies and Coffee Cups, and you will be eligible to win. We're going to take all the names, pull them on a hat, and we're going to have a grand prize, and I am going to tell you what the grand prize is on Thursday. It's going to be phenomenal. You better be believe it. Don't forget, sign up for Cow Pies and Coffee Cups right now. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. Your comment about the Golden Spike made me a little nostalgic this morning. When I was 12, 13, and 14, I had the opportunity to go there for the national finals of the little rodeo, the little buckaroos rodeo. Mm -hmm. And we were under the tutelage in this area of Vern and Bernice Euler. Oh, my. Uh, Bernice Beck. And I was one of the only girls that I know of that got to go from this area. There were a couple of other girls that rode down there. But anyway, it was really fun. I got to go with my twin brother and a dear friend of ours, Camp Pruitt, who has since passed. But you mentioned that this morning, and it brought back lots of memories. You know, when you say the name Euler, you know, of course, that Jack Euler in Twin Falls is a very, very dear friend of mine. Well, when I started... Pardon me? I've heard you mention his name. Well, I was going to say that I also uh, used to, back in the 70s, work with, and I know you know this man, Tim Euler, the great rodeo clown and bullfighter. Tim is one of well, my that, best friends. Yeah, that's his mom and dad. Yep, Green, yep. So. And, and here's the funny part of it. I had not seen, now this is interesting, you should bring this up. I had not seen Tim Euler for over 35 years. Friday night at the second performance, he was sitting in the grandstand, and uh, we had a chance to just say hello to him, etc. And then he came over and said hello. I haven't seen him, like I said, for 35 years. We shook hands as old friends, and it was fantastic. I just really enjoyed it. He was a great clown. Yes, he yeah, was. Very of course, as a little girl, I had a huge crush on him, you know. Yeah, and the thing that scared me the most, the thing that scared me the most about Tim Euler, and I can say this now because it's all in the past, but Tim had a penchant for all of his rodeo acts. They would blow up, and, and sometimes not at the right time. And then, do you know in later years what he did for a living? Do you know? Yeah, I do. They sent him to Russia. They sent him to Russia to dismantle nuclear warheads. And I said, please, you've got the wrong man for the job. I know. Don't put him in a clown hat, for heaven's sake, whatever you do. <laughs> hey, God bless you for your call this morning. Thank okay, you. Thanks. Thank you. Don't forget our friends at Ramsey Heating and Electric. Oh, my. They've got a great big doings coming up on Patriots Day, 911. We're going to be there early in the morning, live remote broadcast, and they're pulling out all the stops. It's going to be fantastic. I'm going to start telling you tomorrow exactly everything that's going to go on. We're going to have prizes. We're going to have everything over there for you at Ramsey Heating and Electric on 911. That'll be a Wednesday, September 9-11. Don't miss it. And it's also hats off 
to farmers. So don't forget they've got all your electrical needs. Over 57 years in business serving you at Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley, where they provide warm winters and cool summers. I've got to ask you this, folks, because it needs to be discussed. What is this nation coming to? What really? Think about this. You can listen to the news. You can listen to other talk shows. But I've got to ask you this question. What is this nation coming to? Total chaos. Of course, now, of course, the Bible had predicted that. There is no respect for anyone or anything. No rules, no morality, no right or wrong. What is this nation coming to? And we're going to go into that a little bit more this morning. But right now, caller, good morning. You're on the air. Yeah, boy, I remember Tim Oiler and these explosions. <laughs> you know, Tim and I worked together when I joined the PRCA back in 1974. And, uh, boy, we worked a lot of rodeos together. And then uh, Tim went one way and I went the other. Uh, he kind of diminished his rodeo career and went on to other things. And, unfortunately, we kind of lost track of each other. And, boy, it was good to see him the other night. Well, good. I'd... I don't want to ever see him and his explosions again, Sam. <laughs> you sound like you were very <laughs> close to one. Me with one of them. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, you didn't. I thought I, I thought I told you that. Well, Tim, uh, he has a penchant for having things blow up all around him. And when I heard, seriously, that he was picked by a team of staff members from Russia to go dismantle some of their warheads, I tried to call the State Department and say, not him, not him. <laughs> well, we were uh, setting in, the, I think, the grandstands over to Rupert. Yeah. And uh, my... Youngest daughter, she was, uh, I think, four years old, was sitting right in, well, she was sitting right by Joyce, and I just moved her over and uh, sat down by Joyce, and this explosion come right over the top of a guy's head. Oh, my. And cracked me on the knee. <laughs> oh, my. And broke my knee. And uh, if my daughter had been sitting there, I'd have killed her. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry to hear that. But, you know, blew a piece of pipe apart. He got too much powder in it. Well, you know, and, and we can look back and laugh now, but uh, I guarantee you it was uh, interesting at the time, to say the least. <laughs> Fred, thank you much for your call. I appreciate it. Thank and, you much. Well, I had to put that in about his explosions because they damn sure were big. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, Fred. I appreciate I, I, it. I wouldn't go to rodeo when the, when the clown come in with the explosions after that. I got up and left. <laughs> I don't blame you. Hey, thanks much, my yeah. friend. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Don't forget Valley Wine Home and Ranch. Oh, my gosh. Have you guys got all these flies at your house today? They're just coming in. And if you hear that, that means I'm killing them as much as I can right here on the air this morning. Holy cow, there's another one. Dead on arrival. Um, they're all over the doors. They're all over every, everything this morning. Holy smokes. Anyway. Valley White Home and Ranch. They probably got all kinds of things over there to get rid of flies, let me tell you that. They got a great fishing selection. You know, I have not yet this year gone fishing. Not one single dog on time, and boy, I'm mad at myself for that. They got all the reels, the rods, the fishing lures, hunting and camping equipment, everything. And they got their clothing, and now we're almost to fall. They got the fall clothing coming in, and they've got all the Montana Silversmith jewelry. Ooh, they've got it all for you, along with with all your feeds, along with all your livestock needs, everything at Valley Wide Home and Ranch. And uh, we've got something special we're going to start telling you in a couple of days about Valley Wide Home and Ranch that's going to be coming up next month also. So stay tuned for more about Valley Wide Home and Ranch, 910 South Oneida in Rupert. You know, I want to get back to what I was talking about a few minutes ago. Have you uh, sat back and just studied what is happening? Just studied what's happening in the news. Put it all together. Compile a list of notes. Teenage punks, they're bored. They're sitting on the steps of a home. They go out and shoot and kill a jogger just because they're bored. Teenage punks 
go out and beat and kill a World War II veteran, a man that was just such an asset to his community. Teenage punks shoot a baby in the face and kill the baby and then shoot the mother. And some absolute pervert in government, just last week it was found out, is advocating a hate-filled race war to take over in this country between blacks and whites. And yet the liberal left is pushing more of their insane agenda. Now the problem is, in my opinion, and I, I'm very conservative, you know that. The problem is, in my opinion, there's no responsibility for actions, and there's not enough harsh and severe punishment. And I'm going to say that again. Harsh and severe punishment. There's hardly any discipline in the schools anymore because the schools, the principals, and the educators have their hands tied. Can't touch little Johnny. Can't reprimand little Susie. Oh, no, somebody will sue. In the home and on the playing field, we need to go back to being tough. We need to go back to tough love and tough discipline. And the number one thing that we need to do, and I don't give a hoot, if somebody's offended by this, you can send your cards and letters all day long. We need to get back to God, church, and family. We need to get back to God, church, and family, and in God we trust. And this weekend, the reason all this is coming about on this program this morning, this weekend I ran into a school principal that is advocating in the school, in God we trust. He stuck his chin out and his chest out and he said, I'm not going to bend. I'm not going to bend. I'd rather get fired than I would absolutely cater to the liberal left thugs. In God we trust. Now, there are those that are offended by that. Oh, well, we can't have religion. Separation of church and state. And those are the people that are complete imbeciles because there is no such thing as separation of church and state in the Constitution. I was listening to the news Saturday, as a matter of fact, before the rodeo performance, and I listened to this woman that had the IQ of a stone that was advocating, well, it's in the Constitution, separation of church and state. You show me one place in that Constitution where it says those words. You can't. It's not in there. And another thing, where is the leadership in this country? Where are the role models? Obama, and yes, it's true, I don't like the man. Yes, it's true, I can't stand his ideology. Yes, it's true, I think his politics is bad for this country and possibly for our Constitution and our future. I've said that before, I'll stand up and say it again. But where's the leadership? He jumped in the puddle of water and said, well, if Trayvon had been my son, he would look like me. But where is Obama now that an 88-year-old World War II veteran gets beaten to death with a flashlight? by black punks? Where is he now that a jogger from Australia playing baseball here on a scholarship is shot in the back running down the road by black punks and doesn't say a thing. Doesn't say a thing. Where was he when these black teenage punks went up and shot a baby in the stroller? Sitting in the stroller. Shot the baby in the face? Oh, I guess those didn't warrant presidential remarks. Where's the leadership in this country, folks? He should be damning the race baiters like Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton. He should be damning them. And trying to unite and unify a country that right now, as far as I'm concerned, and I went through the 60s, I saw the problems in Alabama. I saw the problems with race. I grew up around that. But where is this president trying to unify? He's not. He's more divisive, I think, than any other president we've ever had. Calls are welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. If you can't respond on this and you don't want to respond on this, why? We've got some major problems in this country where nobody seems to want to get back to what's really America's best time. And that's the Norman Rockwell paintings of parents, families, children going to church.
The teacher in control in the classroom. Respect. Morality. Responsibility. That's what we've got to get back to. Not this liberalized garbage that the Democrats and others are espousing. Don't forget, JBs, we're going to be there on Thursday for our lunch bunch for this month of August, and we're looking forward to having you. 1130, we're going to be at JBs at, of course, their address, 136 East 5th North in Burley. And the best of all kinds of goodies. And we also want to thank and acknowledge uh, Walmart and Smith's Food King for some of the great gift certificates we're going to be giving away. But we're going to have great food, as we always do, with Daniel and the rest of the staff, and then the services, great. Just great, nice people. JB's 136 East 5th North. You can stop in for breakfast, lunch, and dinner anytime, all the time at JB's in Burley. Uh, yeah, give me a call. Come on. There's got to be some people out there that are vocal about this, and, and they absolutely want to see things change. The Dr. Spock approach to raising kids is absolutely one of incompetency. It does not work. We need to get back to the tough love, the reprimands, the yes and the no, the black and the white, and the responsibility for your actions, and absolutely severe punishment if you do wrong. Anybody argue that? At least have the guts to call me now on the air instead of later. By the way, I will give my cell phone because I know there are those that are saying, well, you didn't give a number to call you later. Well, I will. 312-2976. 312-2976. Call me. I'll talk to you anytime. Travel Loop Supply, 1050 West, 203 South of Hayburn at Jim McCall's Farm. Oh, they've got all your grease gun supplies, and they got the Lincoln Cordless Grease Guns. <laughs> you can have fun with those. And the grease to go with it. And the window wash for all the trucks in the harvest, and they got bubble ropes. They got all the bubble ropes. If you get stuck at hardest, you can harvest, you can get unstuck with your bubble ropes. And they can clean your air filters, too, and save you money and reuse them and clean them again. Travel Loop Supply, 1050 West, 203 South of Hayburn, 438-8730. Caller, do not hang up. I've got to just quickly get on the Capital Press Ag Minute, brought to everybody by Pacific Steel and Recycling, 320 West Main and Burley, and then we'll take your call. Here's the Ag Minute. Today's Ag Minute brought to you by the Capital Press, the West Ag Weekly. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is postponing the environmental impact assessment of its sediment management plan on the Lower Snake River. The Corps is also delaying proposed dredging of the Lower Snake River in Lewiston, Idaho, and Clarkson, Washington, and near Ice Harbor Lock and Dam in Burbank, Washington, originally intended for this winter. The proposed dredging, originally potentially slated for this winter, is now delayed at least a year. The Snake River was last dredged in that area in the winter of 2005-2006. Snake River dredging is opposed by several environmental groups, but is necessary to keep the channel at its required dimensions. Advocates say loss of the river system would drive up transportation costs for ag products and cause certain sectors to not ship products at all. This is Hannah Brown. For more agriculture news and information, turn to the West Ag Weekly, the Capital Press, and CapitalPress.com. Don't forget, for all your recycling needs this summer, visit Pacific Steel and Recycling. Always call them at 678-2321. Pay, they pay top dollar for scrap iron, tin cars, auto stainless steel, aluminum, copper, and so much more. Wonderful people serving you at Pacific Steel and Recycling. 320 West Main in Burley, 678-2321. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Good morning, Zeb. Yes, sir. You know, here a while back we were talking about, especially the young people, giving awards just because they participated. I want to tell you a quick story about that, how hard work and everything will get you somewhere. I live next door to this little gal who grew up in a family who loved rodeo and, and and writing and that sort of thing. And I watched her grow up, and when she was about 15 or 16, she competed for the uh, Cassie County Princess Group. And I guess she didn't quite make it there. But she kept writing and, you know, working towards this goal, which I know for a fact she worked very hard at. Mm -hmm. And the day came 
last week when she became the queen. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that is a nice story. To live next door to a queen? Yeah, I tell you what, that's a nice story. You know, that goes along with it. I know we got another caller, and I'm going to tell the caller to stand by. Don't go hang up. Uh, but, Keith, it uh, goes along with a story that really surprised me the other day of actor Ashton Kutcher that was uh, doing an awards program not too many days ago, and he got up and he was just advocating that hard work is what got him to where he is today. Hard work. Jobs that were menial jobs to start out with, and then taking on better jobs and working harder for another job and you know something that goes right along with what you're saying perseverance to do your best be your best get the best and always do your best at everything you do and it's always going to pay off in results it's always going to pay off in results never give up amen my friend thank you for that call that got me all inspired again appreciate it all right. That's a truth, too. I was, And the left is coming out of the woodwork against Ashton Kutcher because he stood up there and said about hard work and about how he started off doing menial jobs and he worked harder and got a better job, worked harder and got a better job. Oh, for some reason, they don't want that kind of thing ever broadcast. Good morning. You're on the air. Yeah, hello, Zeb. How are you today? Oh, my goodness. This sounds like the mountain man. Yep. What's going on? Yeah. You know, this deal with these blacks, it's, uh, they're worse off now than they they were when the segregation deal was in because, it, you know, they, at least they they worked, and, you know, but anymore these kids don't have to do nothing, and they're all on, so many of these troublemaker kids, their folks are on welfare and every other assistance you can get, but I don't know, it's between them and them people from over in that Middle East, they're going to be the ruination of this country, I think. Well, let's just kind of really define what we're saying, though, my friend. Um, when you say a certain segment like the blacks, it's not all the blacks by any way, mean, or form. It's a certain percentage of them that want everything handed to them. They don't want to stay home and take care of their families. A lot of fatherless families, a lot of kids that are out on the street doing nothing but causing trouble. It's not all of them. It's not all of them, nor is it all Muslims. But the percentages right now are growing to the point where we've got to stop this problem before it gets any worse. Yep, you're right there. But you know, what do we do? What do we do? You know, you and I are pretty much the same age, and we grew up in an uh, era of this country where mom and dad told us what we were going to do, told us what kind of repercussions we would have if we stepped out of line. The discipline was in the schools. We went to church. We got up and got out of bed and did our chores like dad wanted us to. And you know what? We weren't the cause of what today's problem is. But it's a lack of punishment. It's a lack Lack of responsibility. How do you restore that? Well, I don't know. You, you know, the first thing we got to do is is clean up this Washington back there. I mean, it don't matter whether they're Republican, Independent, or Democrat or whatever. They're all getting to be in the same bed, and it's it's getting a mess back there. I totally agree. Thank you for your call, my dear friend. Don't make yourself a stranger. Well, Thank you. Next. All right. I said hello. I will, my friend. Thank you. Caller number two, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah, good morning, Deb. You know, that, that, you know as far as the education, the, the students run the classroom now. The teachers can't discipline. And back when I was in grade school, you know, if you said a naughty word, you got, you went to the out in the hallway and you got a bar of soap. Yeah. Personally, I didn't participate in that, but some of my, some of my classmates did. So... Well, I'm going to wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. My, hold on, my dear friend. I'm going to just come right out and tell everybody I was not a model student. I was in trouble a lot of times at school. Mrs. Kiltz wore out probably about 37 rulers on the knuckles and the back of my neck. And you know something? I had a lot of respect for that lady, and I loved her till the day she died. She was a great school teacher. Well, yeah, I, the only problem I had was John Dewey, uh, they told everybody they had to be right-handed. And so I fought the system. I'm still left-handed, but uh, the teacher just, I mean, I first and second grade, Mrs. Black looked like uh, she could do the Palmer letters, you know, with her eyes closed. But, uh, you know, I fought it, and they wanted everybody to be right-handed, and uh, that education philosophy has is, is been enlarged into this, nonsense we have today called common core and uh, so forth and now i see the 
the paper, everybody's trying to be indoctrinated. It's okay if you don't get the right answer as long as you go through the right procedure. Yeah, that, that three mean, times, gosh. that three times I four. I have an engineer that can't do regular math, you know. Yeah. I mean, this is unbelievable, but this is what it is. It's all dumbing down, but, you know, our society in general, you and I grew up about the same time, and, you know, those were the good old days, despite the fact we worked six long hours, days, and then had chores to do on Sunday as well before going to church and in the evening as well. That's right. You know, but these kids today, you know, everything, it's just a society. But when they took prayer and Bible reading out of school, that was a monumental uh, landmark. Those two decisions made in 1962-63 by the Earl Warren. And I, I'll call him what he is. He was a damn communist. Excuse my French, but he was a communist. And he uh, led that pack, and that's been the biggest decision. Those two decisions have been brought more uh, problems to this country because a lot of kids, uh, you know, that's the only place they would get any kind of religion. Yeah. Even back in my day, you know, yeah. there were a lot of people that didn't attend church. But we had prayer and Bible reading in school. Yep. So you got it in school whether you got much at home or not. So... But now there's just none of that, you know. All right, my friend. Well, listen, I totally agree with you. And by the way, kudos to you for an excellent letter and rebuttal to the asinine uh, op-ed page of the Times News. I appreciate what you wrote. That was right on. Thank you. Oh, you bet. Okay, All right. Well, I appreciate that very much. I I couldn't believe what they're saying. They want to burn up the forest, you know, kill the off, and they're worried about a logging truck. Yeah, amen. I'm, I'm sorry. It's Believable. It's. So, I agree with you. As a matter of fact, I'm going to. I'll talk to you later and have you come on the program and discuss that more. Thanks, Adrian. I appreciate okay, it. Thank okay, you. Okay. Have a great day. Thank Thanks. you. Bye now. Twin Falls County Fair starts this week. Oh, it's going to be ripping good with the Mighty Thomas Carnival and concerts. They're going to have, of course, the Craig Morgan concert. Boy, he's good. I love his music. September 1st, it's going to be at 7.30 p.m. Get your tickets now. Magic Valley PRCA Stampede, free entertainment, all-star monster truck tour. Hoo-hoo! It is going to be great. Don't miss it. The Twin Falls County Fair and Pro Rodeo, August 28th through September 2nd at the Twin Falls County Fairgrounds. Calls are welcome and appreciated. 436-2244-1866-927-4587. And I'm going to go a step further on this thing. You know, I remember when the Dr. Spockish types came out. Oh, no, don't spank little Johnny. Oh, no. No, sit him down in a chair and talk to him. Reason with him. Give him a time out. Send him to his, send him to his room. He's got a computer, a television, and everything in there. Are you kidding me? And, you know, we've got to have the Dr. Spockish approach. Bunk. You know... You bleeding heart liberals out there that's, oh, well, well, I never spanked my child. I've never done this. I've never done that. I've been around some of your kids briefly. It just doesn't cut the cake. If they were mine, they'd get a swat on the butt and made to go sit in a chair, shut up, respect your elders, and don't speak until I ask you to say something. I can hear the microphone going on. I knew you were going to jump in here. It's like water you couldn't resist to swim in. No, I can't resist. Here's the deal. Okay, so I'm kind of a soft heart, and I I am kind of a soft mother, and I've been having conversations with those who, and they're like, Gina, you need to be a little bit tougher with your child. Because I'm the type of person, I, you know, I don't like chaos, and I don't like to be the negative Nelly, and I like to bring positivity. So when I have to... Yeah, I'll thank my child's bump, but do I like to? No. Oh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think you made an inference there that I said people should enjoy the no, the no, uh, no. parental uh, spanking. Not at all. As a matter of fact, I hated spanking one of my children. But, you know, I spanked it, them for a reason. Yes. And, I, you know, and a lot of people say, Gina, you need to be tougher. And I'm just saying, you know, about uh, my role in as being a parent, uh, I think that uh, we as parents nowadays, we, of course, we don't like to discipline our children. We want everything to be happy and copacetic and everything just do what they're supposed to. But that's not the reality of what goes on. Kids are going to be rebellious. Kids are going to do what they want to do. They're going to push your buttons. They're going to push the limits because they can. And that's well, the point of a child. <laughs> it's our job as the parents to step up and discipline. Now, I am going to raise my hand and say, 
there are times when I'm at fault, when my son does need a severe swatting, but I don't give it to him. Okay, but you realize the right and the wrong yes. of the situation, yes. and you know that it can't, you can't bend the lines. No. There's got to be a right and a, law, a wrong and a, uh, a black and a white in every situation. In every situation. And when people say, well, now, we'll sit down and we'll discuss this with the child. Are you kidding me? My That's German my dad, boxing dad, sit down and discuss something with me to come up with a compromise? Not on my doggone life. Yeah. I ended up with a great big size 97 glove hand on my big fat rosy butt, <laughs> and I learned that he was in control yes and you know honestly kids especially when they're younger like my son's age he needs to understand that mom is in control and sometimes i let him be in control just because i don't want and that's my fault and that is my fault and that's something that i'm working on so basically i'm coming on and saying you know i am not the perfect parent and i do let uh, and i am all sometimes i compromise when i shouldn't so I'm just saying, you know, there are times when I really do need to step up to the plate yeah, and give my son that. I'm not, I, I'm not going to criticize you, though. I can't because I've seen you with Kennedy, and I know the kind of mom you are. And I'm not going to ever say anything in deference to what you do or don't do. But I, I know that you discipline. I know you know the right and the wrong of the situation. And I know there's no compromising of the gray in between. But that also carries over into the schools. Now, I yes. don't care if the educators are upset about this whatsoever. I honestly think that we need to go back to a discipline yes. in the schools, and Absolutely. I don't care if it's a ruler to the knuckles or a ruler to the back of the neck. I got it. Didn't hurt me. And you know something else? I got it, too. Hey, I got swats. Oh, boy. And I'll tell you something else about this. I had such a respect for my teacher, Mrs. Kiltz, mm -hmm. and I keep referring to her, <laughs> that... He definitely uh, made her mark on you. Yeah, but no, wait a minute, though. A mark of love. She yes. cared about me. She yes. cared about my education. She cared about making sure that I paid attention and I learned. And I remember vividly one year back in the 80s, we flew home to see my mom and dad on their anniversary. Deanne and I went back. And I found out that Mrs. Kiltz was in her later days almost at the point of going to death's door, mm -hmm. living, and I'm going to choke up on this, um, living in a, in a rest home. And I asked if I could please go see her. She had Alzheimer's really bad, did not know me. But, you know, I will never forget my whole life that I went to see her sitting in that wheelchair. I love that lady, even though she was... She had tough love for me. And uh, I, like I said, I wasn't kidding. I think I yeah. broke 37 rulers on my neck and on my fingers. But you know what? I cared for her, and I learned from her. And it's those type of teachers that make that indelible mark on us as students and our children. And it, it's not, they care. And they care about each and every single student that marches through their classrooms Amen. in year out. Amen. And so that's, you know, I'm hoping that, that Kennedy gets that kind of education that I had. That's why I sacrificed to send my son to a school that costs me money every month, but you know what? I do so willingly because I know that he is going to be in a good environment. I know that, uh, and I've told him this, look, if he gets out of line, go ahead and swat him on the bum yep. and, and, and send him to the principal's office and don't be afraid to do that. And they're like, oh, no, no. You know, and, but Gina... I'm like, no, please do. Gina, here's the deal, and I know I'll get cards and letters from those that didn't have the backbone to call while we're on the program discussing this. The Dr. Spock approach has not worked. Look what it's done in the last 20 years in this yeah. society. We've become a soft society. We've become a society of compromise. We've there you go. We've become a society of... Well, uh, well, it's, it's a, well, the little Johnny, he just, he's not doing Look well at well the well advocates well. that are pushing, and I'm going to come out and say this, Common okay. Core, where it's not the right answer, it's how you arrived at a potential answer. That's not it. I don't want a nuclear scientist to say that 3 times 4 is 11. I want a nuclear scientist to say it's definitively 12 before he pushes the button and the rocket goes up and comes back and hits us. Yeah, we can't. We cannot compromise with our education, and I have my own opinions about Common Core. I really don't like it at all, and so I will do everything that I can to make sure that my son has a better education than what Common Core is providing to our students. All right, you know That's what? what I'm say. Interestingly enough, even though there's a generation gap between us, 
we more or less share the same ideas on the yeah. same page as far as child rearing and responsibility. But when I look, and I've got to do a commercial with the weather here, but when I look at the situation of these teenage punks bored, go out and shoot oh, and kill somebody. I know. Teenage punks go out and kill, beat to I'm death a 88-year-old man with a flashlight. Teenage punks that want to go shoot a baby in the face. Where, pardon the language, folks, where in the hell are the parents? Where's the responsibility? Where's the guidance for Pete's sakes? Amen. And when I read that story about that 88-year-old man in Spokane, I cried. I cried because it was that man that gave those boys their freedom to go out and do whatever they want. And this is how they choose to use that freedom? Amen. Mm -hmm. And you've got a phone call. I'll tell you what, caller, don't go away, please. I've got to tell everybody the weather real quick is brought to you this half hour by Sportsman's Warehouse, 1940 Bridgeview Boulevard in Twin Falls, 737-9900. Reese Widmeyer and, of course, all the crew, quality gear. The Sportsman's Warehouse carries only top quality products for the serious outdoor enthusiast. They're more than just a store. They're your outdoor adventure partner. Check it out with all the friendly experts. Quality gear at Sportsman's Warehouse in Twin Falls. Here's Michael Rogers Weather with an update. Hi, everybody. Michael Rogers for MichaelRogersWeather.com. Start of a brand spanking new week of weather we haven't seen in a while. How about that? How about cool? Remember what cool used to feel like? C O O L. Cool. What am I talking about? Well, you're looking for sunny clouds with a high of 87. That is cool. That is so cool. 62 for the overnight low. Enjoy the day. Enjoy the weather. Enjoy the cool. The only weather you got. Uh, Michael, thank you. Brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse. Hunting, fishing, archery, fishing, camping. The list goes on and on. It's all there. The best at 1940 Bridgeview Boulevard in Twin Falls, Sportsman's Warehouse. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Yes, is that, Bob. I was watching, trying to get some sports in on a station out of Boise, ABC station uh, on TV. And they were covering the uh, rally in D.C., you know, the Martin Luther King mm -hmm. was going mm -hmm. on there. I've lost track because there's always something that seems. And uh, it was amazing what the local station in Boise did to protect and promote the fallacy of what was going on there and Al Sharpton and, and how they tried to legitimize these phonies. And, and this coming out of Boise, and you see, I guess... You know, in order to get them to change their tune a little, because it had to have been a local decision, is to call and complain. But you see, I, I don't know, Zeb. I don't know. It's just like when I called to to invite people to the summit, uh, elected officials. I asked them if anybody else had called them, and they said no. Now, I wasn't able to make the summit because I had something happen to me that was, un I couldn't believe it happened, but it did. And so I felt terrible. But, you see, we, we can't just assume that somebody else is doing it. We have to stand up and do it ourselves. I agree. I mean, you summed it up right there. If we don't start, and, and here's the deal. I'll start on this program. I This sounds really calloused, and there are those in the audience that think, oh, who does he think he is? But you know what? I'm an advocate that, A, we've got to restore a very severe punishment um, advocacy against our children when they do wrong. It's got to be strong. It's got to be severe. It's got to be something they don't want to face it again so they won't make the same mistake twice. If they do, they know that they're going to be responsible for their actions. And that carries into the court systems. We've got to make our politicians more responsible. How do we do it? We don't put them back in office. We throw the bums out. We've got a lot of bums to get rid of. We've got to restore a justice system that is going to look at the crime and say, sorry, Charlie, you're going to the cell and you're not getting out of there because we've had enough of you. We've got to have a criminal justice system that's not just going to slap them on the back of the hand. It's going to slap them in the face and make them wake up to realize they can't do these things to society anymore. And the number one thing we've got to do, Randy, and again, I don't care if somebody's offended by this, we've got to get back to God. And if that makes somebody mad, tough. I remember one more thing and I'll be done. I remember when Bill Clinton had been caught with a Monica Lewinsky and, and he was standing before the people one evening with his crooked finger and he says, I did not have sex with that woman. And he was lying to his teeth. And he was just about the shade of gray of death. 
You can tell he was scared to death that he was done. He was more afraid to lose his job than he was to do the job with honor. And, and, and you see, since then, situational ethics, situational law enforcement, and, and that's what we live with now. You and I do something wrong, and they whip us down like there's no tomorrow, and then we're over with. And these guys get away with it, and we sit here and we let them do it, because too many people think that somebody else is going to get up and make the phone call or show up or do whatever. And, and I tell you, I'm tired of feeling alone. And you think, oh, Randy, shut up. Well, okay, I'll shut up. When things look better, I'll shut up. I agree. Randy, I appreciate your Thank call. You. Thank you. I know that you're very, very dedicated to what your thoughts and beliefs are. And uh, I am, too. I mean, when I, when I hear this story about uh, this gentleman up in Spokane and uh, well I got a I got a text right now that I can't respond to but um, when I hear about this gentleman up in Spokane World War II veteran that is just beaten basically for nothing yeah beaten to death with a flashlight what are they gonna do outlaw flashlights and then I hear about these teenage punks that were bored and they just go out and shoot and kill someone, shoot him in the back while he's running down the road, jogging. Teenage punks that go up and shoot a baby. This story, when I initially heard this story, I'm not ashamed to admit it, I cried. Because shooting a baby in the face while it sits in the stroller in front of the mother, I mean, how absolute perverted is our society today that we are allowing this kind of thing to happen and when I say allowing it to happen I mean allowing it to happen where are the dads in almost every case of these punks the dad's not there the dad is not there the family is not a family it's a mother and the, in one case of these stories the mother's been in jail and the dad's gone there's nobody there to tell these kids right and wrong what in the world is going on in our society that we've got this Dr. Spockish attitude taking over that Johnny can do this, he's got to express himself? Baloney. Johnny, go sit in the chair, shut up, and don't you move until I, the adult, let you have permission. Go ahead, I can't wait to hear your response. No, no, I, honestly, I'm not going to disagree with you on this because it is true what has happened to our society we have desensitized our children they think that life is a video game they think that life oh we can go out and kill somebody and oh well they've got five more lives stored up no they don't yeah. we're showing our children all of this blood guts and gore quit pushing it down our throat i don't want my son seeing this i don't want my son talking to me about zombies no. because she's so afraid about zombies when he saw it on a cartoon there you go zombies are not real quit feeding kids Garbage. Hey, by and the way, by the way, it's our job to uh, censor that. Let me ask you a quick question as a mom. Now, you are, like I said, the generation below me as far as yes. age bracket is concerned. Yes. But, mm -hmm. I, you know, I grew up watching the Roadrunner and I grew up watching Bugs Bunny and mm -hmm. and all these other people. I'm trying to think uh, who's the uh, Elmer Fudd and all those. They were funny. Yep. They were funny. I looked at some of the cartoons that are on the stations today. They're absolutely, oh ridiculously you perverted. Know, should we do to, to Adventure Time? Um, oh. No. I'm, I'm sorry. I would rather have my son watch... Scooby Doo with uh, the gang with the mystery machine, then watch Adventure Time any day of the week. I, I just fun. couldn't believe it. I saw this cartoon the other day, and first of all, it was extremely sexy. Yeah. Uh, secondarily, it was extremely violent with yeah. the blood, the guts, and the gore. And I thought, this is the cartoon series for kids? I got to do a commercial. Hold on, call. I'll be right there. Yeah. Don't go away. Don't forget your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations, with all your free peace of mind tire protection. If your tire is damaged beyond repair, they'll replace it at its value. Their workmanship is guaranteed for the life of their tires, and they offer free pre-trip safety checks. All of this and more with the tires you purchase from your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. These folks are great. I mean, so easy to work with. All your tires, front end alignment, shocks and struts, best in brake service, all the big, great batteries. But you you know, above all, the best in service. Stop in and see Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Lane and Rupert, John on Pauline in Twin Falls, and Randy 
on Overland and Burley, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Call her quickly. Good morning. You're on the air. Yes, sir. Uh, as far as being responsible for our actions, uh, the court up in Idaho Falls, the lady recently left her child in the car uh, uh. for hours in the heat, and it was found dead. Yes. The court sentenced her to 30 days suspended sentence, one year unsupervised probation. Pathetic. How pathetic can you get? How how do you leave, sir? And I'm out of, almost out of time, but not you personally, but in generic terms. How does a person? How does a parent leave a baby in a car like that? Oh, I well, irris irresponsibility. I, I just I, I'm sitting here. Responsible. I, I just know that God's the ultimate judge, but yet this person should be punished so severely for being not just stupid, but being absolutely irresponsible. This there's no reason for that kind of death to occur. That's absolutely not. And and these young folks that uh, well, like the old gentleman up there that could beat to death with a flashlight. Oh. Uh, somebody needs to take them out in the alley. There you go. Now, I'm an advocate of that, and I don't care who knows it or who's offended by it. You know, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. These teenage punks, if that's all they have for respect for human life, then like you said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Absolute. Thank you, sir. God bless. I just We've got to clean this up somehow, folks. This Dr. Spockish attitude is killing America. Worst thing that ever happened. Worst thing that ever happened. Oh, Let's give them a time out. I'll give them a time out. We're going to be back in about six minutes with more. we got Frosty Woldridge coming up next half hour along with the Alliance Defending Freedom and all kinds of goodies. And later on this hour, or I should say this morning at 1030, Senator Jeff Sidaway talking about that horrendous sheep killing uh, caused by wolves. And I'm going to have him on the phone. Don't go away. My vendetta is taking out all the flies today. I've been hitting flies all through the newscast, trying to get rid of as many as I can. And my arm's getting tired. I've killed about a thousand. They're just coming in today. It's driving me nuts. Okay. Excuse me. Seventh Ranch, brought to you by our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven great locations. Thank you very much, along with some of our great advertisers, Lee's Furniture Floors and more at 459 Overland and Burley, and our friends at Western Way Services. From the canyons of the Snake River and all across southern Idaho, we're all in the Western Way Service is always at your disposal, and I want to hit this morning. It's time to get on the route service and get rid of your garbage. I just had somebody call me the other day and say, what is their number? Well, it's 734-6969. Western Way Services, yes, the route service, we've been on it for, what, six, seven years now? Absolutely phenomenal. Your garbage is out there. Gone! They take care of it. Wonderful people and very, very reliable. And don't forget, they've got all the dumpsters, too. If you're cleaning out your garage or whatever, fill them up, they'll take care of them. Western Way Services, always at your disposal, 734-6969. We're going to have Frosty with us in just a minute. Stand by, but I also want to remind you about our friends at Hanson Mortuary, 710 6th Street in Rupert, with our dear friend Joel Heward and the rest of his staff, absolutely providing families that they serve with the best possible support and comfort. Always, always upholding the highest ethical standards with unquestioned integrity. You know, just this weekend we were talking about funerals and we were talking about, uh, you know, making sure that we have all of our uh, items in a row so that we can alleviate a lot of the stress and the worry for our family. Call them. Call them and get a lot of the pre-planning information that you need. 436-5636, Hanson Mortuary in Rupert, serving you. Well, needless to say that I'm honored to have a dear friend in Colorado come on our program weekly and visit with us, and that happens to be Frosty Woldridge. Good morning, Frosty. How are you? Good morning, Zip, and uh, you know, just uh, wishing you a last great week of the summer and all of the listeners. 
May we enjoy the warm temperatures uh, and um, sunny skies and uh, celebration of the the last of, uh, of summer. And I uh, hope it was a great summer for everyone. And uh, just uh, hope everyone enjoyed uh, all the blessings that we enjoy here in the United States of America. You know, Frosty, i got to be honest with you. Just moments ago, moments ago, Deanne handed me a couple of your blogs. And I, it's so interesting that I was going to talk to you about this anyway. I, I I just don't even know where to start. I am so mad, and I talked about this first hour. I am so mad as to what this nation is coming to. Total chaos, no respect for anyone or anything, no rules or morality, no right or wrong, no punishment, no responsibility. And when I look at these three punks, worthless punks in Oklahoma, being bored... And then going out and shooting a jogger running past their home. Or these worthless, absolutely worthless punks in Spokane beating to death a World War II veteran with a flashlight. I get so incensed, I wish I could have five minutes, five minutes, in the room with them alone. Your, your emotions, and certainly my emotions, uh, coincide with this thing. That, that, that's just not... Those are not the only ones. I've got a, a list of, uh, you know, in March, uh, two black teenagers uh, attempted to rob a white woman who was walking her baby there in Brunswick, yes. Georgia. Yes, yeah, we talked about that, too. And, and, yeah, and they, they, they were 15 years old, and they, they shot the baby dead. Uh, you got two, uh, I got it here, two, off, uh, two white off-duty police officers in Minneapolis uh, visiting Green Bay, Wisconsin, were attacked by nine black men. Uh, this thing goes on and on. Here's a bus driver, uh, black, faces charges uh, because three blacks on the bus were beating the crap out of a younger white boy. Uh, what we're finding and what we're seeing here, I think, is a breakdown of, of personal accountability, certainly personal responsibility. I think we're seeing the breakdown of the melting pot uh, uh, theme of our country where all of us are responsible for living and conducting ourselves in positive, uh, the contributing lives. Uh, and when you see these, uh, it was actually two black kids uh, that killed uh, Chris Lane, the Australian baseball uh, scholarship player there in Oklahoma. They said, and I wrote, uh, when they asked, uh, why did you do it? They just said, that, well, we were so bored with the end of the summer uh, that we, we, we went out and killed him for the fun of it. Mm. Uh, when you get that kind of an answer um, from three hoodlums, uh, the one, I think it was uh, Shanti, uh, I think it was Shanti, uh, who was 16, and James Edwards, who was 15, uh, these kids had a, I, one of them had a mother who uh, was in, in and out of jail from, from the time the child was a baby on That's cocaine right. charges and mm -hmm. distribution and so forth. These kids never saw a father, never had the balance of a mother-father who were healthy uh, and had jobs and so forth and so on. One of the great tragedies that I hope that Americans appreciate that in the last four and a half years, Barack Obama, who is also an African-American, has not done anything to employ at least a third of the unemployed uh, African-American workforce out there or find ways to employ them, to give them some kind of dignity and to move toward uh, employing the minorities, not only blacks, but also Hispanics. And certainly the poor whites in this country, there, there's you know, 47 million uh, Americans that are on food stamps. So this is a systemic and endemic problem, and it's not being addressed by the president, who is a black American himself, and, uh, uh, and also just all of Congress, which is white and black and, and male and female, uh, I think that the Congress is so disjunctive at this point and so fractured that they can't even begin to, to deal with what is going on. And of course, my whole thrust is we're about to immigrate uh, and import another 100 million third world immigrants into this country in the next 37 years. Uh, so there's no way to ever solve this consequence that we just saw killing some white kid for the fun of it. 
I will say this, and I was so vocal and uh, very, very upset the first hour of this program talking about this problem, that I'm going to throw three words at you that absolutely are three words that I'm going to back, uh, stand behind. I will not back up. I will not weaken. I'll go face to face, nose to nose with anybody on this. We need to have a discipline factor in this country to the point where it was back in the 60s when you and I were growing up. No means no. Yes means yes. There is no uh, meeting of the black and the white. There is no sitting down and discussing with mom and dad, well, maybe we can do this. Maybe we can mediate. No. Yes and no are going to be adhered to. The other thing is that we need to have punishment. Punishment that is going to make these people, whether they're kids, whether they're adults, understand that what they did is wrong and they damn sure better not do it again. And thirdly, we need more faith in this country. We've got away from the God-given principles of how to raise families and everything else. And I will absolutely stand up and say that the Norman Rockwell paintings of America with families going to church is something we need to get back to. Punishment, discipline, and faith I'm going to stand behind. I'll stand with you, Zeb, uh, because it worked so well for so long. Uh, some of the things that I tried to give as solutions uh, uh, for this great crisis right now, do you realize that African Americans constitute only 13% of the American total population of 316 million? That's only around 35 to 40 million uh, African Americans. And yet, uh, uh, fully, uh, almost a million are in jails and prisons and correctional facilities out of the 2.4 or 2.3 million people that are in jail in this country. And what I, what I ask for, or I, I, as, a, as, a, as a former educator, I think we need to mandate supervised public education for every black child until they graduate from high school. And I think we need all male prep schools and all female prep schools instead of having uh, all of the mixed genders because there's too much intrigue going on as soon as they get into puberty. And they're just simply not responsible because they don't have parents that are responsible. And the reason for that is is that 68% of African-American children are brought up by a single mother. And 99% of those mothers are on welfare. So there's no balance out there. And, and so what we need to do is mandate a parent-teacher education to educate the parents as to their responsibilities uh, and also how to invest the, these children in classwork and homework and school activities. I can tell you this. My father, a United States Marine, career, 27 years in the Marine Corps, I never heard the word board. I was always <laughs> there you go. here. I was always in school. I was always in the... Uh, the, the, the video club. I was in the, the the Rotary Club. I was in Kiwanis Club. I was I was in baseball, basketball, uh, football, and track. Uh, I had a paper out at five o'clock every morning, seven days a week. Uh, I, I bored. <laughs> I I had to work hard just to keep up with myself. Uh, and so that's what we need to do with the children. We need to have a purpose, and we need to have discipline. We need to have absolutely meet out uh, you know punishment. We need to have counselors and advisors and supervisors to keep these kids engaged, uh, not only in school, but after school. And one of the things in my third part is we've got to stop paying minority women to birth as many children as they can to gain more money. Uh, we need to monitor the EBT cards. These are electronic benefits transfer cards. They give free money without responsibility. And, and, and the more uh, babies these minority women can have, uh, they just keep getting more money, about $1,600 per month per child. Uh, and as I said before, I remember back in Detroit when I worked there, one woman on uh, aided dependent children, she had 24 children. She had 24 children, none of them by the same father, or a couple of them were by the same father, but most of them were all different fathers. And she was just riding all of this welfare money. Uh, we need to change welfare to workfare. Well, I'm going to say this. Doing this. I'm, I'm going to say this, and I, I think you'll agree with me, and if you don't, then, uh, you know, we'll have a good discussion about it. I will stand behind the fact that our welfare system right now today is so far out of whack and out of touch with reality. Our welfare system is actually aiding criminal effects in this country and damaging our society. That's exactly correct, you know, and, and what I say in these solutions is that we've got to stop cyclical welfare and poverty and illiteracy 
uh, by giving it a free ride, and that's what we're doing. We are absolutely giving uh, you know all of these poverty-stricken minorities a free ride and expect them to turn out like some kind of a contributing and responsible human being. That is not happening. You know, and I say it's better to build a contributing human being K through 12 rather than deal with the disaster that's now manifesting throughout the youth of this country uh, and so much of black America and Hispanic America. These kids are, are, are illiterate, and, and we're turning them out at the, to the tune of about a million two. I mean, 7,000 kids quit high school every day in this country. One every 26 seconds was the report from CNN. Something's wrong with that. We, we, we must take some kind of action, and I, I would think that our African-American president would be on the forefront of this thing by providing and, and mandating and pushing and moving toward jobs that fit these uh, minority kids, uh, give them a, you know, a McDonald's job instead of giving it to the illegal aliens, which have taken over most of those, uh, you know, those small wage jobs. Uh, that's what we need, but we're not seeing that kind of leadership. I absolutely agree with everything you said, but I want to go one step further on this. You and I are basically the same age, grew up in the same area of the United States back in the Midwest, and basically had the same kind of parental upbringing. But when they introduced this silly, slovenly, absolutely ultra-liberal, Dr. Spockish approach to raising children, that destroyed the family, destroyed punishment destroyed responsibility and I'll guarantee you I'd like to see that whole concept of oh let's give little Johnny a time out oh let's compromise oh let's let him share his feelings so we understand him better Frosty as far as I'm concerned that is barnyard fecal material and I'm gonna say it like that well it certainly is I mean I, I when I first started teaching in 71 you actually could paddle a kid, and I guarantee you, once a kid gets paddled, just two two swats on his rear end in the principal's office with two teachers to to uh, to uh, sit there and, uh, and and witness the whole thing, so there wasn't any kind of child cruelty and so forth. Uh, that kid straightened up and squared away just like that. I mean, they, they they understood the pain and punishment, and it's not that I'm a capital punishment person as far as uh, you know pain and punishment, uh, I, because. Uh, at some point, you, you need to have a, a teacher, parent, principal involvement. We, we really need kids. You know, good kids come to school from good parents. You never have to have any kind of punishment. You don't have to have time out, or you don't have to go to the principal's office because the kids are in school because the parents uh, taught them to love reading, taught them to love education, taught them to you know they they study and they work hard and they do their homework and accountability. And, and unfortunately, these minorities, uh, and, and a lot of white minorities, they, 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 they get up to eighth grade, and they're already smoking and doing drugs, and they're not doing their homework, they're goofing off, and they get to be the future, you know, roofers and the, and the, and the, and the, and the cleaning up the potty uh, and, the, and, and landscape artists of the whole country uh, because they don't have any skills. They can only do and work with their hands. And, and and if they can't do that, then they just have babies and or they start doing drugs and they sell drugs and so forth. So what we really need is parents and parent responsibility and accountability. We need to have a mandate of, 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 of literally accountability to the parents and to the parents of the children and to the schooling system. And you wouldn't have to have spanking of any kids. You, you literally get a co-creation of the educational thrust for each child. That's what we need, but that's not happening right now, Zeb. I know it's not. And I'll tell you something I, sh I want to share with you. I shared the first hour on this program. I ran into a school principal this weekend, and we sat down, and we're talking about the subject matter that we're visiting about this morning. And he said, you know what I did and I'm going to take the heat for it, I'm going to take the repercussions from it, and I'm going to take possibly the public outcry from what I did, but I have put up in my office and at other parts of the school, in God we trust, and I'm not going to take them down because I think that's the philosophy that could turn this country around the way it should be. I admire this school principal. I think he probably will get in trouble. I think in today's society he may even lose his job. But he said, I'm going to go down as a man with his beliefs, and I'm not going to weaken. 
Well, and I would stand with that, man, because it's those beliefs that created this extraordinary country where all races and all creeds and all colors have enjoyed, really, the most incredible possibilities. Uh, when you think about black America or Chinese America or, or, or now we've got Pakistani America, we've got Iraqi America, we've got Somalian American, at no time in history has all and so many races been given the opportunity to, for a free education uh, to gain a job, uh, to, to live a life of choice. Uh, it, it's amazing to me. And, 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 and yet now we have black flash mobs beating up white kids. We've, we've got murders going on for the fun of it. We've got uh, all of these, these, these fragmentation and lack. As a matter of fact, do you realize that the Democrats who are in con total control in Chicago and Detroit and, 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 and two other major cities in the United States of America, uh, like Los Angeles, those are the, the murder capitals of the, of the United States and, and the world. Those, mm -hmm. those are that liberal uh, kind of uh, motif. And, and, it, and it's, it's thriving, but guess where all the murders are coming from? Uh, th this is no kidding. We're, I think, the number, third or fourth biggest murder country in the, in the world. But if you took away those four cities, it's Detroit, Chicago, Los Angeles, and one other, I can't remember, um, we would be uh, we would be like 47th in the world when it comes to murders. Yeah, and so at some point we we've got to get down to conservative values that have worked for this country, conservative values that educate our young, and give them purposeful uh, and creative lives that move to contributing toward and for and to our country rather than what you're seeing going on. Okay, but but right there we've got to end here in about two minutes. But the simple <laughs> question, and it's only a three letter word. How? How do we do this? Well, and, and that's what I, 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 I'm, I'm giving my ideas. If, if all of you want to go to beforeitsnews.com just to type in uh, 50 years after Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech or just type in Frosty Wooldridge, I, I'm on the marquee there, and you'll see what I give for solutions. We really have to uh, get into this. Education is the key and it's the ultimate and only key for a positive future for black and brown and white America. And when you ha you're an educated person, you respect other races, you respect everyone's journey, and you respect and, and honor your country, and you respect and you honor uh, God, the creative, uh, you know, the creative, the, the, the person, the creation of our, our whole world, our whole country, all based on God. And so in, in my appreciation, we need to absolutely go into the inner cities we have to go into the middle cities we have to make education and respect uh for education and mandate education as the key to solving all this and i, I gave the my five uh, ideas for that uh in this piece and you can do it in your own community that is the key we have to have citizens who are educated in order to carry on this free society under a very delicate constitutional republic and and that and, and get your own ideas out there bring them bring them to the forefront bring them to the, the letters to the editor bring them to op-eds in your your school paper or your high your your city papers uh, send it into usa today we as a country have to gather together and make not wars not foreign wars not military might we need to make educational might the key to the future of the United States of America, Zeb. I couldn't agree more. Frosty, a very good conversation this morning. Uh, I want to continue more points of this next week if we have some time. I know there's other news items we want to get into, but thank you, thank you for your comments this morning. God's blessings to you, and have a great week, and we'll see you next Monday. Well, am I going to see you next Monday? Because I think it's a Labor Day week. We are not going to see you next Monday, so keep your thoughts to yourself then. <laughs> I forgot about that. I won't be here either. We'll see you in two weeks, and we'll carry this on. Well, uh, thank you, Zeb. And, and again, everyone, you got a part of this. And again, uh, one thing that I want you to all appreciate, uh, NumbersUSA.org and CapsWeb.org. Those two organizations are going to allow you to stop this massive amnesty that's coming at us like a, a, a runaway brakeless freight train. So please go to those websites, empower yourself, and empower America not to have this amnesty. Because if this amnesty passes, 
it, everything's a moot point past that. The, the nation will spiral downward into a nightmare of, of, of population and, and fracturing and an educational nightmare and illiteracy, you name it. So uh, please check out those websites. Join them for free and become a part of the folks who care about our country in the future. It's that. Frosty Woldridge, dear friend, thank you. God's blessing. See you in two weeks. Appreciate it. Sounds great, Zed. Thank you. You know, I had forgotten about that, and I'm so glad he reminded me that next Monday is Labor Day, and I'm not going to be on the air, nor is he. So we'll be taking a little vacation. I'm looking forward to it. Don't forget our friends at Idaho Lending Group. Make sense with your money. 1182 Eastland Drive, North in Twin Falls, 734-5626, their telephone number. Remember it. I'll give it to you again in just a moment. NMLS number 181777, Equal Opportunity Lender. And please take my word for it because they worked with us, I worked with them and on a refi of our mortgage and saved me all kinds of money. Please remember to give them a call and understand, understand your loan options. Believe me, it's your money. Idaho Lending Group, 1182 Eastland Drive North in Twin Falls, 734-5626. Also, I want to remind you, I've got flies in this office that are just driving me nuts. They're all over the place today. Are you, have you folks got flies in your home? They're just coming through every crack and crevice uh, to get in. Evidently, it's their last hurrah, and I'm trying to do away with as much of the population as possible this morning. Uh, lease furniture, floors, and more. Check out all the goodies for the beautification and comfort of your home, like uh, dinette sets or perhaps bedroom sets or or carpeting. Oh, by the way, on carpeting, they've got rolls and rolls and rolls of carpeting. All the different classes of carpeting, all the different styles, all the different colors, everything there for you, along with all the flooring. And, and then, of course, don't forget, too, all the bedroom sets, all the mattresses. Wow, it's all there. At least furniture, floors, and more. 459 Overland and Burley. You stop in and see these wonderful people today. Really good folks. Uh, let's see what else have we got cooking here. I think what we will do is one more good word and then we're going to go right to the phone lines and get Eric Stanley with the Alliance Defending Freedom on the air, so stand by. Let's ride. Highway 24 between Rupert and Burley. They're closed on Mondays, but they're open tomorrow through Saturday. Now, listen, let me tell you, this is where the fun is sold. This is where the fun is sold. They've got all the ATVs. They've now got in stock the Can-Am Maverick 4-seater, that Max 4-seater. Oh, 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 that is fun. And they've got all the 14, 2014 models showing up daily. You just open the door to that showroom and go, holy buckets, look at this. They're all there. They're all there for you to enjoy. Let's ride. Highway 24 between Rupert and Burley open Tuesdays through Saturdays 9 to 6. Definitely where the fun is sold. Right now we're going to go to the phone lines and uh, say good morning to a gentleman that's been on our program in the past, Senior Legal Counsel with the Alliance Defending Freedom, Eric Stanley. Good morning, Eric. How are you? Hey, good morning. Great to be with you this morning. Well, it's always a pleasure to have you on the air for a good conversation about what's right, what's wrong, and what's happening in this country. And let me preface our remarks a little bit by saying that I absolutely, absolutely stand with you, the Alliance Defending Freedom, on uh, providing guidance to churches regarding what's happening with the Boy Scouts of America. The, and I'm going to say this, and you can correct me if I'm wrong or you don't agree with me, but I think the Boy Scouts of America have literally been tipped over as far as their moral values are concerned by a secular America with threats, etc., and they've lost their way. They've lost their course, and I can't support them anymore. Now, your turn. Tell me I'm wrong. Well, one of the things that we are telling churches, in fact, the major point that we're telling churches is that uh, churches need to really consider partnering with the Boy Scouts. They need to make a very serious decision about that. Um, and, and what a thing that a lot of churches do not understand is that uh, the Boy Scouts require churches to sign a chartering agreement in order to have a, a troop be part of their church. The church becomes the chartering organization. And this chartering agreement mandates that the church sign that they are in agreement with all of the Boy Scout policies. Now, that didn't used to be a problem until the Boy Scouts radically changed their policies. 
uh, recently regarding membership of the boys and the Boy Scouts to allow those that are openly avowed and engaged in homosexual behavior to be members of the Boy Scouts. Uh, and churches are going to have to sign that they agree with that policy. And so it, it, this really presents a problem for churches that hold to the traditional belief regarding homosexual behavior that, that is in Scripture, that is sinful and immoral. And I think churches are going to have a, a real uh, decision to make. Do they continue to abide by their religious beliefs, and or do they uh, kind of go, you know, go against those and allow the Boy Scouts to be a part uh, of the, the church, even though they disagree with their policies? And so what we're saying to churches is, you know, they may come down to the point where the Boy Scouts have to find another place to meet, have to find another chartering organization. And that's a difficult uh, decision for a lot of churches. We understand that. But it's not that the Boy Scouts or, or that the churches have abandoned the Boy Scouts by doing this. Mm-hmm. It's that the Boy Scouts have abandoned the morality that have made them consistent with churches for well over 100 years. Uh, and I think that's an important point to note. It, it's the Boy Scouts that have changed, and, and that change has, in essence, made them inconsistent with most evangelical churches. Uh, and so we want churches to be very careful uh, when it comes to signing that charter agreement and make that decision as to what they're going to do. You know, the thing about and this situation and any other situation that's going on with a lack of morals, a lack of purpose, a lack of dignity, a lack of right and wrong in our society, Eric, is the fact that the liberal left is always saying, well, we have to compromise. We have to compromise. We have to meet in the middle. You've got to bend. You've got to change your attitude. Why is it that we always have to compromise so that they're acceptance of their hideous, sinful ideas are in the forefront. Why do we have to compromise for that kind of secular lifestyle? Well, I think that's an excellent point, and it's something that we are telling churches that, in essence, when they, when they look at this Boy Scout chartering agreement next January, and what they're going to be asked to do is to compromise their religious beliefs to keep the Boy Scouts in their church. And, uh, you know, in my opinion, there's really nothing that is worth that. Uh, your religious beliefs should not be compromised no matter what. Uh, and that's what we want churches to understand. And, you know, it, it's more than just that, too, because the compromise of religious beliefs could have a detrimental impact on churches in the future when it comes to other issues. So, as an example, a few years back, there was a case out of California where a, a music minister was found to be engaged in a homosexual relationship. And the church fired him. The music minister sued for employment discrimination. And the church was able to prove that it had a religious belief against homosexual behavior, and so the music minister's suit was dismissed. Well, now, if a church claims that it has a religious belief against homosexual behavior, but yet it allows the Boy Scouts to be an organization that the church accepts with open arms and welcomes into their facility, even though they allow open and avowed homosexuals, that could have a detrimental impact on a church's constitutional rights uh, when it comes down to a, a host of different situations. Absolutely. And, and that's what our, our caution is, is that churches just need to be very careful with that, that when you compromise your religious beliefs, it can have unintended consequences that you may not even be aware of at this point. I don't know if you're familiar with Aaron Tippett. He's a country music artist, but he wrote a song, and basically the song was, if you can't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. And right now, those words are very appropriate for what's going on with this Boy Scout and the gay policy and churches. Churches had better remember, the Bible is very emphatic. God didn't make any mistakes. Why do we have to bend for the secularism in our society? Well, that's exactly right. And, and, you know, there seems to be a lot of this. And we we saw this just last week uh, in New Mexico with the photographer case where the New Mexico Supreme Court said, well, you know, to live in citizenship in this country demands the compromise of your religious beliefs. And that's just flat out wrong. Uh, Our founders of our Constitution put in there the free exercise of religious beliefs. That is in the First Amendment. Uh, And that is actually the first part of the First Amendment. Uh, It's our first freedom, we call it, uh, the free exercise of religion. And that that means more than just being able to sit back within the four walls of your church and believe what you want to believe and, you know, kind of have your holy huddle. It means more than just that. It means the ability to live out your faith in all different aspects in the marketplace uh, and in public society. 
And, and that's what churches need to understand when it comes to the Boy Scouts. Uh, you know, I, I had a talk with a church uh, from another state that uh, has a Boy Scout troop within their church that has 180 boys in this troop. Uh, and they're going to have to face that decision. And, and for the pastor, uh, it wasn't even a decision. He said, absolutely not. He said, we are not going to sign that chartering agreement, even though uh, we have a, a huge church, a huge troop in our church, because what this means is he says we are not going to compromise our religious beliefs. We're not going to bend on those on those beliefs. Uh, and and I told him, and, and just as I've told other churches, again, it's not that you're abandoning the Boy Scouts. It's the fact that the Boy Scouts have abandoned the morality that's made them consistent with churches for all of these hundred years or so of American history. And churches just need to understand that and be aware of that uh, and make that right decision. Eric, this is a fight that is going to be uh, a bloody knuckle fight. This isn't going to go away. Whether it's the Boy Scouts, whether it's the Girl Scouts, whether it is a private business, the movement on the left right now to have the homosexual agenda come in and infiltrate, infiltrate and basically take over is not going to go away. So, with that in mind, this is going to become a bare knuckles fight without the gloves. What do we do? How do we keep fighting back? Well, first of all, I think you're exactly right, and I think the way you start, you fight back is to start to realize what kind of fight we are in. Uh, this is not just a fight regarding same-sex marriage. Uh, it has never been about that. The end goal of the homosexual legal agenda is the silencing of all dissent, uh, and that means the trampling of constitutional liberties and constitutional rights. And so we've got to recognize what kind of fight we're in and we have to be aware of the times that we live in and make the right decisions. So, in, a, in, in example, uh, with regard to this Boy Scouts policy, I think it mandates that churches have to say to the Boy Scouts, I'm sorry, you cannot be a part of our facility or a part of our church anymore because you have abandoned the morality that have made you consistent with our church, and we are not going to compromise our religious beliefs. I think it may mean that, that uh, business owners may have to take a particular stand uh, in, in certain cases, as, it, as they are doing in, in opposition to the uh, Obamacare mandate, uh, the contraceptive and, and abortifacient mandate, uh, and in a host of other issues. I think we've got to recognize the kind of fight we're in, and we have to have the resolve to stand and not compromise our religious beliefs, but also to be smart about it. And that's where Alliance Defending Freedom comes in. You know, this, this is why I think God raised us up for a time such as this, that we can be here uh, to help defend and protect the constitutional rights of millions of Americans uh, of the Christian faith, uh, to make sure that those rights are protected, that they're not trampled on. Uh, and so I would urge people to, to call us, to, to utilize us, and, and yet to support us uh, in those efforts, to become link arms with us and become part of this fight. Um, you know, we are an alliance together and we're defending our freedom that's what our name means you know eric one word sums up i think uh what the left is trying to do to uh not only religious people but people of conscience and people that want a moral compass and people that believe in rules and regulations and uh responsibility and that one word is fear they try to create a fear that absolutely, whether it's economic fear or whether it's fear of backlash with more from their groups, etc., they're creating a fear in our society and churches are starting to back down, businesses back down, private citizens are backing down. How much more of a backing down are we going to take in this country before we absolutely, pardon the expression, fall on our butts and we can't get up again to be the country we once were? Well, that's exactly right, and I think that's a question that we're, ha we're having to answer right now uh, because, uh, and again, in, in regard to this Boy Scout thing, you know, as churches uh, need to understand, the little compromises along the way can have a, a dramatic impact uh, on where you find yourself down the road. Uh, and you may think, well, you know, I've got a huge Boy Scout troop in my church, and I just, I'm not going to deal with this, I'm not going to fight this issue, and I let it, I'm going to let it go. And that's a compromise, and that compromise will have an effect down the road. And it may be that you find yourself as a church uh, five, ten years down the road having to open up your facilities for same-sex weddings, mm -hmm. that you may find that you are subject to an mm -hmm. employment discrimination lawsuit uh, for firing someone who 
is engaged in the homosexual lifestyle, that you may find yourself the subject of a discrimination lawsuit from your Christian school being refused, uh, refusing to accept uh, a student that is an open and avowed homosexual. And the list goes on and on and on. And so we've got to stand firm on our religious beliefs. Really, our, the religious beliefs of, of Americans are the last vanguard of freedom. And if we don't stand firm on those religious beliefs and, and, and be able to defend our right to hold those religious beliefs, to live them out, to act on them in every sphere of our life, if we do not stand firm on that, and if we compromise even just a little on those things, then we're going to find ourselves down the road where uh, really we have no constitutional rights uh, down the road. I think that's where we're headed, uh, and I think that's the day we are in. Uh, and so we've got to stand firm and stand strong. How long have you been an attorney? I've been an attorney for 15 years now. All right, that's a uh, that's fighting a, these fights of religious freedom. Okay, that's a good answer right there because that uses the time frame that I want to get into. It, since you started fighting for the rights of uh, people with religious beliefs, did you ever anticipate, Eric, that we would see the left gain so much momentum in such a l short time to try to take over our beliefs and our our morals in this country? Well, when I first started in this field, uh, this is something that we knew, we saw coming down the road, this conflict uh, between the homosexual legal agenda and uh, people of faith. But I, I don't think any of us anticipated uh, just how quickly the conflict would accelerate um, and just how soon that we would find ourselves where we are today. Uh, you know, this is something that we've warned about and we've, we've tried to fight against and, and protect against for a few years. But uh, the strides that the, the left is making uh, in this area and in, in really trampling constitutional freedoms uh, are pretty stark and pretty dramatic uh, just even over the last five years uh, with the same-sex marriage battle and, and others. Uh, so it, it, is, it is, but, you know, I, and I think the thing that I would want people to understand is that, though, it is not too late. Uh, that we still live in a country that values freedom, that values the constitutional rights. Uh, we still have access to the court system to go and to make sure that those constitutional rights are protected. We still, as the people, have the right to elect representatives to all levels of government and to appoint judges to all levels of the, of the bench that uphold those constitutional freedoms. But it's going to demand more than just us sitting back and wringing our hands. We've got to become involved. We have to maintain our religious beliefs, and we have to act on them in all spheres of life, including the political realm. And I think that's really what it's going to come down to. Absolutely. Eric, you do a wonderful job. Ladies and gentlemen, Eric Stanley. Eric, before I let you go, tell everybody how they can follow this case and others with the Alliance Defending Freedom. Well, absolutely. You can find out information about our, our Boy Scout legal memo that we have on our website and, and all the other cases we have ongoing, AllianceDefendingFreedom.org. And uh, certainly there's a place on there where you can support us and uh, become a partner with us in these battles, and I would certainly urge you to do that. So AllianceDefendingFreedom.org, you can find all you need there. All right. Hey, real quick question, 913. What area are you in, Eric? I'm in Kansas City. Oh, my goodness, a Kansas City Chiefs fan. Are they going to have a pro football team this year or not? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a transplant to Kansas City, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm technically a Dallas Cowboys fan since I grew up in, in Texas. So uh, it's been a long, hard road for us, And uh, but there hadn't been much to cheer about with the Chiefs here this year. But maybe this year will be different. Who knows? Well, you know, I have uh, on many occasions allowed Dallas Cowboy and Kansas City Chief fans on our program, even though I am... I'm green and gold, Green Bay. I'll let you come on again. Eric, thank you so much. <laughs> it just shows we can all work together no matter where we stand. Amen, brother. Hey, thanks so much. Appreciate you being on the air. Thank you, Jeff. Good to be with thank you. Thank you. Eric Stanley, Senior Legal Counsel, the Alliance Defending Freedom, and a very, very interesting topic this morning, churches and the Boy Scouts. What is going to happen? Calls are welcome and appreciated at 436 2244 1866 927 4587. And right now it's time for a weather update brought to you by Red's Trading Post, 203 Fifth Avenue South in Twin Falls with my old buddy Ryan Horsley. Hello, Ryan, how you doing? Red's Trading Post has been in business since 1936, and they have all your hunting needs, all your long guns, handguns, everything, knives, tactical packs, ammunition. It's all there for you 
with Rudd's Trading Post. 203 Fifth Avenue South in Twin Falls. Here now, Michael Rogers with a weather update. Hi, everybody. Michael Rogers for MichaelRogersWeather.com. Start of a brand spanking new week of weather we haven't seen in a while. How about that? How about cool? Remember what cool used to feel like? C-O-O-L. Cool. What am I talking about? Well, you're looking for sunny clouds with a high of 87. That is cool. That is so cool. 62 for the overnight low. Enjoy the day. Enjoy the weather. Enjoy the cool. The only you got. There you go, Michael. Thank you so much. Reg Trading Post is always looking for used firearms, and they'll give you a really good deal on them. You stop in and check with them or give them a call, 733-3546. Reg Trading Post in Twin Falls, bringing you Michael Rogers weather. Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. By the way, a couple of folks, of a couple of husbands and wives that I want to say congratulations to, Gerald and Wanda Seavers in Kimberly. They used to be residents of Murtaugh, farmed out south of the lake. They had their anniversary yesterday, and we want to wish them a very happy anniversary. And two wonderful people that I've known for quite some time, Time, and they're uh, one of the stalwarts of our lunch bunch, and that's Jimmy and Frida Flowers. They're celebrating their anniversary today. So congratulations. By the way, Cow Pies and Coffee Cups, my blog that uh, I hope you're getting, and if you're not, visit my website, zebbell.com, and sign up for the Cow Pies and Coffee Cups newsletter. And the reason I'm telling you that is Cow Pies and Coffee Cups will soon be turning out Volume 100. Holy smokes, where has the time gone? And we're celebrating by giving away a huge prize to one of our lucky subscribers. So be sure and tell your friends and family to get signed up right now. You still got time. We're going to have an, a drawing coming up towards uh, about two weeks for a great big grand prize if you're a reader and acceptor of Cow Pies and Coffee Cups. Just go to zebbell.com and sign up right now. Big, big prize, and it's going to be a prize you don't want to pass up, okay? Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Jeannie, do you get my blog? I do. You do? You send it to, yeah, you send it to me. <clears throat> I can't remember who's got it and who isn't. I just thought I'd ask. Yes. Okay. And uh, everybody needs to be aware. Uh, Zebbell.com and click the various buttons and sign up for it, and we'd love to get it to you. Yeah. By the way. all those, those bells and whistles on your Facebook or yeah. on your uh, website, you know. Yep. Hey, by the way, are you aware of the Farmer's Almanac? Oh, love the Farmer's Almanac. Well, now, here's something people don't realize, and I was really impressed by this. The Farmer's Almanac, if you were to put a percentage on it, uh, 1 through 100%, how many times, percentage-wise, do you think the Farmer's Almanac is correct in prognosticating the weather? 80%. You cheated! No, actually, I didn't. I was just a guess off the top You of cheated because that's exactly what the percentage is. Or is it? Yeah, you're acting Jesus. like, well, I didn't know that. Good golly. You've got the figures right in front of you, probably. Actually, no, I, I didn't even Google it or anything. But that's amazing. 80% is better by many, many percentage points than most weathermen do on a daily basis. <laughs> So always rely on your farmer's almanac. I couldn't believe it. And they are predicting, by the way, yes. for this winter to be, and I'm uh, going to use this word, doggone cold. But what about the moisture? What are they saying? Okay, so we can have the cold temperatures, but what about the moisture? Well, in certain places, they're predicting extreme amounts of snow and below average temperatures, very, very cold. And uh, I am going to go get a copy of the Farmer's Almanac, uh, hopefully this afternoon, and then I'm going to read their weather challenge for this year and see what they got to say. You know, I really do uh, love uh, reading the Farmer's Almanac, and it's always uh, full of interesting little tidbits. Oh, yeah. So I, I'm, yeah. I'm a big fan. And did you hear over the, uh, what was it, uh, Friday that Pocatello got flooded a little bit? Yeah, a little bit? Wow. Yeah. 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 Uh, like uh, anywhere from uh, two and a half to four inches of rain, just depending on where you were at in the Pocatello area. Now, yeah. it really got nasty. Really looked like it was going to be like the proverbial, you know what, on a flat rock down mm -hmm. in Tremont. And it never did rain. 
And never did hit you guys? No. I think it all got stuck over in eastern Idaho, and that's probably why. And uh, I tell you, we need moisture so bad. So bad. So bad. I think that they were, uh, uh, I read some uh, numbers that last year uh, the Pocatello area only got like 3.8 inches of rain and uh in one day they got two and a half to four Mm-mm. hey by the way you know who colin powell is oh yeah yeah you know the more i hear about colin powell the more i study colin powell the more i read and listen to colin powell the more i am convinced i don't like him really yeah and i'll tell I you why i'll why? tell you why okay uh, he has come out, and I think he was a turncoat to a, um, a president and an administration that supported him and was very decent to him. And I'm talking about Colin Powell back to yeah. George Bush. Yeah. Then he has come out uh, in recent days, and he really shocked me when he said this, because I think he's uh, eating right into the hand of the liberal left when he said that he is against voter ID laws and against anybody having to prove who they are at the polls. I find that to be repulsive. I don't see why everybody's up in arms about this. It's always been that way anyway. You you go into your your precinct, you show them your ID, so you can prove who you are. Yep, this is it's me. I'm voting today. Thank you very much. And you just that, that's it. I don't see why. There's what, is the what is the I hassle? What is the hassle? I don't know. These same people, if they want to take a uh, trip and go someplace on an airline, and I don't care if they're Hispanic, I don't care if they're uh, from a poverty area in the black neighborhood, whatever, they're not going to get on that airplane without an ID. I know they're not going to go anywhere. You can't, you can't go and uh, you know go into a drinking establishment without your your ID. Bingo. You have to have your ID for a lot of things. Even if you're going to make a simple purchase with your debit card and you're handing your debit card over to somebody who's never seen you before, they might ask you for your ID. What about <laughs> driving a car to work? Amen. You've got to have your ID for that. And I don't understand why. In this country, the land of the free and the brave, why we should diminish the value of our vote, our vote, which is really something to be respected, why we should cheapen it by just saying all sizes, all people, everybody, we're not going to do any checking, you just go vote, we don't care. Vote as many times as you want, we don't care, we're not going to check you. And and here's my concern on this, Uh, people who are maybe not from this country Sure, they have the right to exercise their vote. Okay, I get that, but you have to become a legal citizen. There you go. But secondarily, uh, we would have people who are deciding things for the taxpayers and for the true voters. There you go. You know, uh, and they could, like, sway the vote in a completely different way from what the major, you know, taxpayers want to do. That's exactly the whole point. What in the world is the matter with us that we make these silly, flimsy, absolutely childish uh, arguments against having an ID to vote when you need an ID for almost everything else? You can't go cash a check. You can't drive your car. You can't get on an airplane. My goodness, the list goes on and on. I don't think students can even register for books at a college without having an ID. And I just don't understand. This and when Colin Powell came out against it and said it's discriminatory against minorities, that is the dumbest, lamest excuse I've ever heard. I, I have to agree. And did you read the latest news on Colin Powell where he's saying that uh, he finds the verdict on uh, yes. Trayvon Martin questionable? Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm just really hurt by this man and his what I would call incompetency. You know, I kind of like him. Now you're making me not like him. Oh, got a phone call okay, on. I got to quickly read yeah. this too. I'll be right with you. When you think about life insurance, think Cameron and Siemens. When you think about health insurance, retirement planning, employee benefits, and your security for your business and your security for your family. You'd better think about Cameron and Siemens. You betcha, 436-4424, 436-4424, Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. You call them today. Boy, when I said you betcha, I thought I was acting like Sarah Palin. Good morning. You're on the air. Um, there's another uh, radio talk show host who is uh, recommending that we have um, tax day be the day before election. Mm-hmm. And not only do we need a color or an ID to get into the election, I guess, but let's uh, pay our taxes the day before we go to the polls and vote for people. What do you think? I think it's a great idea. Okay. Because the people who pay taxes 
Well, show up to vote, I can assure you. Amen, lady. And I'll tell you what, I am so incensed that Colin Powell and any of these other nimrods would condemn and complain about IDs when we need IDs for everything else. I think it's a very frivolous and very childish argument. Um, he's just better than that the big guy. I don't think he's even thinking that through. He was a military man. Yeah. He should know better. I agree. Chris, God bless you. Got to run to the news. Thank you. Bye. We're going to take about a six-minute break and then come back with James Herson, Attorney James Herson, uh, the attorney to the stars in Hollywood. And then at 1030 this morning, Senator Sidaway. Going to be interesting. Don't go away. Wow. A Monday. Sure feels like it, too. Hope you're having a good one. Zeb at the Ranch brought to you by, of course, our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven of them, as a matter of fact. And then, of course, don't forget to our advertisers like Lease Furniture Floors and more at 459 Overland and Burley and Western Waste Services, always at your disposal. Get on the route service today. Call 734-6969. You hungry? I am. Doggone. Let's head to the Chadwick Sports Grill, 139 West Main and Burley. They've got all kinds of great specials every day. Luncheon specials, and they've got senior citizen dinner specials uh, Monday through Thursday from 4 to 6 p.m., only five ninety five. And what are they going to have today? Oh, pasta primavera with garlic toast and super salad, just five ninety five. You're going to love it. You're going to love the people, the atmosphere, and the great fun place to go eat, the Chadwick Sports Grill, 139 West Main in Burley. And real quick before <clears throat> I lose my voice, uh, we're going to have uh, James Herson on the air in just a moment. If you'd like to start earning thirty to $40,000 a year in as little as four or five weeks, holy cow, you better call Lucky Born at CSI's New Sage Truck Driving School in Burley right now. 878-5802, the number to call. You'll get one-on-one -on -one over the road training and all the necessary endorsements. And when you've earned your CDL, their team will even help you get your first truck driving job. Yeah, buddy, look out. New classes begin every week. Call Lucky Born right now at new CSI Truck Driving School in Burley, 878-5802. have a lot of guests on this program every week, and I always look forward to having James Herson, uh, New York Times best-selling author and commentator and media analyst, law professor. I mean, this guy's list of accomplishments go on and on and on. James, good morning to you, sir. How are you? Hey, good morning. How are you, Zeb? Well, I'm going to be real honest with you, James. This morning, uh, the whole concept of the show this morning has been, what in the world is this nation coming to? Total chaos, no respect for anyone or anything, no rules, no morality, no right or wrong, uh, punks shooting somebody because they're bored, punks shooting a baby in the face, I mean, uh, punks beating up and killing a World War II vet with a flashlight, uh, and then a story that I just read that I just was handed from you about an eight-year-old uh, shooting a woman in the back of the head. I'm telling you, James, I'm concerned. This country is really falling apart at the seams. Well, it is, and, you know, the fundamental moral fabric of any society, of any civilization, is what holds it together. It holds together the economy. It holds together, basically, uh, the order of, uh, of life and when you've had this assault on our moral fundamentals for, I mean, for so many decades in all the institutions of society, of schools, of course, of government, and, and what I cover in the media, both entertainment and news media, um, this is what you reap. I mean, as you sow, so shall you reap, and I think it's... Uh, and when you have economic hardship, as we do in this country, despite what they may be telling us, um, it requires greater moral fiber. I mean, I, I don't believe that the society that we currently have could handle themselves as well as Americans did during the Great Depression. Um, you know, would people stand in soup lines? I don't think so. And so I, I think that's all a part of it. And, and in the entertainment business, what we're teaching young people um, was typified by last night's um, VMA Awards on MTV, where each of these young, I hate to use the word star, but they are 
people that young people look up to um, try to outdo each other by being more crude and more vile than the other person. I mean, it also, they've gotten to the point where Madonna looks tame. And it's, um, it just, it gets worse every year. And now we have to see a former Disney star, Miley Cyrus, um, engage in just horrible behavior and outfits. And um, even her fans, some of her fans have turned against her. And all of that, I think, contributes to what we see when you talk about, um, you know, the crime. And in this particular one that happened in this little town in Louisiana, isn't ironic, the town is called Slaughter. It was named after one of the founders of the town. Uh, it's near Baton Rouge in uh, a, an, an area um, that's just a peaceful area. This uh, An eight-year-old boy shot a essentially 90-year-old woman uh, in the back of the head, one shot from a revolver he got a hold of. But it was just moments after he had been playing a very particular violent video game, uh, Grand Theft Auto 4. They're up to five now. This is a huge profitable franchise, these um, video games. And by the way, this was in a trailer park. Mm. It's not a, it's a, it's an impoverished area. And that's also what's happened, is that this digital technology has reached every strata of, of America and is hitting an eight-year-old boy in a, in a trailer park. And it's the technological advance that makes Grand Theft Auto IV such a powerful um, tool. And, it, and there's, we, we see um, studies that show the relationship and so it's just another example of why parents are challenged here in the digital age. Okay, now, but wait a minute. There's a couple of points of questions here that I need to ask. Number one, eight-year-old kid with a, uh, a video of Grand Theft Auto 4. What is this eight-year-old kid doing watching a video like that? Where's the parental responsibility? Where's the parental correction and punishment? Where are the parents in this story? Well, we don't know yet because they're still, you know, investigating how this occurred. But the fa I know this anecdotally from, you know, my friends and from people I've come across and, and understanding the technology. The problem is parents are really not aware of, you know, the, the kinds of games and these gaming consoles and what kids can get a hold of off of the Internet. And kids learn it very early, like even as young as eight. You know, they have the Xbox and the PlayStation and these various gaming consoles that are in homes, many homes, you know, just it's part of their home entertainment, much like a television. But those consoles are hooked up to the Internet. Games can be downloaded. And almost all these big computer games, especially Grand Theft Auto, have an option, what they call massive multiplayer options so that the your child can be playing a game with somebody in Asia on the internet uh, they can download a game and you may or may not even know it depending on how the account is set up so it could be yes definitely a lack of parental supervision but it could also uh, be that um, the parents and in this case, this 87-year-old woman was described as his caretaker. It appeared she lived in the home. Um, she, being 87, she probably just hadn't a clue. She was sitting there watching TV when he walked up and shot her in the head. Mm. Uh, but, the, but the thing is, we have to develop more understanding as adults in these t in the, what these gaming consoles can do so that we can oversee that you know in, in most of them these games are designed uh they'll have a disclaimer this is for adults but i've seen this occur on these gaming consoles they literally just ask them to check a box are you an adult check this box and that's it mm. so i mean that, that's all they can do 
uh, when you're downloading games. Now they have to have an account set up with a credit card, but typically when they first set up the accounts, they have essentially a credit card in there, or they, or they aren't um, having the internet service, so it's very easy. It's just like in iTunes, they can download products and it shows up on the credit card bill. So uh, my guess would be that the parents had no idea that this was on there, or this kid had an older brother, um, something like that. But it's it's a real challenge, but it's it's deadly serious. Mm. James, let me ask you this, uh, and you know the bulk of the people that I'm going to talk about. You know the Matt Damons. You know the Sean Penns. You know the Michael Moores. And they have a far-left liberal uh, description of how they feel, but they also have families. Now, you can't tell me that these people are so cold and so calloused and so liberal that they're not worried and concerned about their own kids. Why don't they come out and speak out against this kind of trash? Well, it's a good question, but I think, you know, it's interesting. Because on one hand, um, they'll appear in videos to try to have our Second Amendment rights uh, undermined by the government. But on the other hand, they'll appear in films using, you know, fully automatic weapons and heavy artillery. Matt Damon, in particular, d just did that in Elysium um, because it's profitable. Mm -hmm. And so I have to say it's a crass answer, but I think that perhaps the real reason um, has to do with the fact that it's money and they, it's their livelihood. And... The public wants to see action movies with lots of shooting, and so they don't want to uh, actually speak out against entertainment media. Um, you know, right after one of the, that horrible shooting in Connecticut, Harvey Weinstein said, well, we got to have a summit. we got to talk about violence in the media. And that was it. They talked about talking about it, and that was... That was the, the extent of it, and I think it's because of the money. Mm -hmm. Now, another piece that you had written, and I was really infatuated with it, was the August 19th piece about Hollywood has a case of post-election remorse. You don't mean to infer that perhaps some of the Hollywood uh, lefties are starting to look at uh, Obama with perhaps a real-life perception of what he really is. Well, uh they are, and it's not, certainly not, you know, the majority, but there's a significant minority that are going public. I happen, you know, you mentioned Matt Damon. Today, a piece has is, is surfaced on the Internet where he did an interview where Matt Damon was praising the leaker, Edward Snowden, and I call him the leaker, but he really, you know, in saying he did us a service, which actually I agree with Matt Damon that he did that. And I think the revelation of the NSA surveillance has caused, and I hear this from people that I work with in Hollywood, it's caused a, a stunning reaction. It's like, you mean, wait a second, we're the people that were upset with George W. Bush because we were worried about the government knowing which books we took out from the library. If you remember, and that was the big issue uh, Michael Moore was talking about at that time. Um, and the revelations that Edward Snowden and now the Wall Street Journal, and there's leaks coming from other sources, it seems like there's a story every three days that it appears as though essentially uh, NSA surveillance is so pervasive, it's... it's taking um, data and metadata and content from innocent citizens when the NSA stands for, you know, going after foreign threats. And it appears to be consistent with the way this administration handles other agencies like the IRS and a politicized Justice Department. And yeah, I mean, people like, well, Oliver Stone used very strong language. He's in Tokyo promoting a documentary. And um, I saw the clip of this when he twice called the President of the United States a snake. He repeated it twice. 
who really, these are reporters, they were stunned and silent, except for one who was clapping uh, enthusiastically. Then Stone says these words, we have to turn on him. Meaning, and I don't think I've ever heard anybody, you know, and remember Oliver Stone's a left-wing guy who likes Fidel Castro. Um, but and then he went on to explain why he's using this strong, I called it reptilian language, um, because of the NSA surveillance. Mm -hmm. And it's breaking down strangely. So then I see these uh, statements from John Cusack, tweets from Alec Baldwin, Michael Moore, and they're all really upset with the surveillance and pinning it on this administration. Um, you know, Michael Moore quoted the New York Times, which had said, based on that NSA surveillance story, quote, the administration has now lost all credibility. And he says, I agree mm -hmm. that they've lost all credibility. This is Michael Moore. And now, does that mean they're going to turn around and support, you know, someone that's conservative? I, I doubt it. But they may be taking a a hard look at somebody like a Rand Paul, because um, Ron Paul was probably, you know, very popular among these people because they saw him as someone that that wasn't, you know, a typical politician. And so, so it's a, uh, yeah, it is interesting, and it's it's definitely the NSA surveillance. And but there is a cognitive dissonance here, uh, Zeb, because these are the same people that supported candidates and parties that stood for big government, intrusive government, intruding on our lives. So all of a sudden, after supporting government that intrudes on our lives, these same people, when it intrudes on their life, hey, wait a second, that isn't what we bargained for, but really it is. Okay, but wait a minute, you bring up an excellent point. I'm almost out of time, and I want to throw this question at you. Uh, if they're unhappy with Obama, and Oliver Stone refers to him as a quote-unquote a snake, and they're concerned about the NSA and the surveillance and spying on Americans, aha, then you open up the Pandora's box of Hillary Clinton already uh, basically establish, uh, establishing herself as the front runner on the Democratic Party for the next president. What about her, the lies, the cover-ups, and everything with Benghazi? How does she fit into the fray? Well, that's going to be real interesting uh, to see how, because, you know, uh, Bill Clinton has a long time relationship with Hollywood where they've loved him and, and especially the big fat cat fundraisers. I mean, you know, when we talk about people like George Clooney, Barbara Streisand, uh, the people that founded DreamWorks, um, you know, Steven Spielberg and David Geffen, Jeffrey Katzenberg. And I, are those people going to abandon um, Hillary Clinton? And it depends on a number of factors on, you know, who she um, runs against, what kind of things Bill Clinton promises Hollywood, what kind of goodies he promises to give them, um, a whole host of factors. You know, now Chris Dodd is heading the Motion Picture Association, you know, longtime Democrat senator. He's firmly ensconced there, you know, like a lobbyist. Well, he is a lobbyist in Washington, even though it's illegal, but he's a lobbyist in the Hollywood community, and he's also a Clintonista. So it's, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting, but I think some of these people that are peeled off may, may support uh, an alternative to Hillary if they're, if they're presented with one. But I can tell you this, you know, it's not going to be some Republican establishment nominee, you know. If it, I mean, I like if, if Hollywood's not going to be able to support, for example, Jeb Bush because he has just his last name alone, like Barbara Bush was saying. So I, I don't see that, and I don't, I don't really see them jumping on a uh, Christie bandwagon, but. Maybe, maybe Rand Paul. All right, but wait a minute. You forgot one name that I think is going to come into the fray, and then I'll let you go, James. But I've got to throw Ted Cruz in there because I think, honestly, isn't there some appeal of what he says and does and is advocating that might take some of that Hollywood vote? 
You know what? I'm glad you brought up Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz is, I think, winning people over to him for his sheer courage because and his strength. I, I heard one of the uh, pundits on the weekend show say, you know, Ted Cruz is willing to stand up against his colleagues, against his own party, against the administration, uh, the Republican establishment. Gee, I wish there were Democrats that were willing to do that on our side. You know, I heard somebody say that, and I think, yeah, he's definitely, I mean, Ted Cruz and Rand Paul are kind of birds of a feather right now um, in the sense that they're willing to speak out on these issues. Um, I, I would call them emperor's new clothes issues, and definitely the NSA surveillance is that kind, because anybody that just reads the simple text of the Constitution, particularly the Fourth Amendment, if you read it and think about it, that our founding fathers were protecting their data that could be in the form of parchment that, that you know, like Jerry Ford said, if our final... He said if our founding fathers were alive today, they'd be rolling in their graves. <laughs> but the fact is, they would plainly understand that the text of the Constitution is inconsistent with seizures of large amounts of electronic data authorized in part by a secret court operated in secret, that that would not exact, of innocent Americans, that would not comport with the Constitution, with a Constitution that has the kind of Bill of Rights that they so carefully put in, all of which is redundant. Absolutely. You know, I wish we had more time, but we're out of time, and I'll look forward to the next time that you're on the air. Best-selling author, commentator, media analyst, and law professor James Herson. God bless you, man. Always a great conversation. Thank you so much. Well, God bless you, Zeb. Take care. Thank you, sir. I really enjoy having that gentleman on my program, James Herson, and uh, talking about Hollywood and what the stars are doing or not doing as far as now some are turning against Obama. Interesting. Very interesting. Let's see. What have we got to talk about here real quick? Oh, 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 yes. Uh, Sportsman's Warehouse. My goodness sakes, are you aware that they have all the right equipment that you need when you go outdoors? That's right. Sportsman's Warehouse carries only top quality products for serious outdoor enthusiasts. They've got it all for you. Sportsman's Warehouse in Twin Falls is the great indoors for those who love the great outdoors. Everything quality with the best of people and knowledgeable folks that understand what you're looking for. Sportsman's Warehouse, 1940 Bridgeview Boulevard in Twin Falls, 737-9900, with, of course, my old buddy Reese Widmeyer, the manager at Sportsman's Warehouse. And also, real quick, I want to remind you, the Twin Falls County Fair, oh my goodness, it's in full swing this week, yes. And get your tickets, if you haven't, get your tickets on sale right now for the great big Craig Morgan concert. That's going to be September 1st at 7.30 p.m. It is going to be ripping good. Really, really a great country recording artist, Craig Morgan. You're going to love it. Along with, of course, the great rodeo, PRCA rodeo at its best right there with the Magic Valley Stampede and the Mighty Thomas Carnival and All-Star Monster Truck Tour, free entertainment at the fairgrounds, all of this and more running August 28th through September 2nd, the Twin Falls County Fair and great rodeo with the Magic Valley Stampede. Don't you miss it. We'll be right back in about three minutes. And now back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. Uh, thank you very much and welcome back. Last half hour, we're just on the stretch headed home. And right now, we're going to visit with Senator Jeff Sidaway on the telephone line. And uh, the Sidaway family just had a horrendous occurrence with wolves and and uh, literally destroying uh, 175 head of sheep. Jeff, good morning. How are you, sir? 
Good morning, Tim. How are you today? Well, I'm really honored to have you on my program. Um, as I said earlier when I talked to you at home, I had a call from Representative and Speaker of the House, Scott Bedke, and uh, suggested I get you on the air. You have really taken a hit because of the resurgence of the wolves here in the state of Idaho. Tell us about what happened uh, where you were grazing your sheep. Well, uh, last Saturday... Uh, at 1 a.m. in the morning, so late, late Friday night, Saturday early in the morning. Um, we had a couple of wolves come in to our band of sheep, and I say a couple, that, that's what uh, our sheep herders saw the next morning, but I don't know how many were there. But anyway, they came in over the top of the hill, and the sheep were bedded on the... Uh, uh, north side of that hill, and what, and they started to bite and and kill uh, the sheep on the top of the hill. When they started that attack, the uh, the sheep got up and they started to run down the hill. And when they started to run down, some of the sheep at the bottom of the hill didn't know what was going on, and so they were still laying down. Uh, in the middle of the night there, and uh, so the top sheep started to jump up on the sheep that were still laying down, and and, uh, and it ended up suffocating 119 lambs and 57 ewes. Oh, my goodness. And, uh, the, the herder could hear this happening, and he could hear our dog, guard dogs, and our, our guard dogs were... Uh, we're also being attacked, and you can tell the difference between just a bark and a and a yelp when they're being injured. And and uh, uh, the herder went out there with his rifle and his flashlight, but of course a flashlight's only good for 20 or 30 feet, and he couldn't see what was going on and he couldn't see what kind of an animal it was so he called my son JC uh, right then and told him that something was in the sheep and he couldn't figure out what it was yet whether it was a bear or a lion or wolves or coyotes or what and uh, uh, he said that he was sure that there were some dead ones and uh and so he uh, watched the sheep. The sheep, the rest of the sheep, got up and, and moved away from that spot. And the herder got up and stayed with the sheep that were on the move and didn't check back to where the the sheep had been piled up. And uh, and he stayed out there literally all night with his rifle and his flashlight trying to to protect them from any further attacks. Well, about 5.30 a.m., it started to get light enough that he could see, and he went back up to where they had bedded, and there were just dead sheep everywhere. Mm. And so he called my son again, and my son uh, uh, loaded up his horse and, and headed right up to the mountains and... and um, I told him to get a good count on the sheep so we'd know exactly how many were in that pile. So when he got when he got all done, uh, he took some pictures on his cell phone and and uh, sent them back to me. And there were 119 lambs and 57 ewes in that one pile. Up. He also told me that there were another five or six sheep. That, were in the band that hadn't been killed yet, but were torn up. And, mm -hmm. You know, a wolf, uh, when you get to know the creatures a little and get to have some experience, almost every predator leaves kind of their own footprint on, on how they kill, like a coyote will kill on the throat, but a wolf almost always hamstrings bites them in the hind legs and brings them down. And, and those that were in the herd that weren't dead yet were were all, all of them were hamstrung. So um, so we were pretty sure then. Mm -hmm. And then about uh, five minutes after he called, he called back and said that 
he just saw two wolves right up on the skyline. Mm -hmm. But they were too far away for him to get a shot at them, but he identified them as wolves. So um, we contacted uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, um, what we commonly call the government trappers, uh, to come up there and uh, and make a verification that those were wolf kills. So uh, they didn't get up there that day, but they got up there the next day, Sunday, and they were able to find enough sign to, to uh, validate that it was a wolf attack. So well, Jeff, let me ask you this. Uh, what happened. Yeah, let me ask you this question. This is not the first time that you've suffered losses. I understand that you've lost guard dogs and also horses. So you really must have a bitterness against the reintroduction, if you will, of the wolves here into the state of Idaho. Well, we were certainly opposed to it, and I think we could, you know, we were uh, active early on when, when the pro pr proposal first came about. Uh, my wife dug out her testimony in 1990 when she went back to testify in Congress of, against the, the wolf reintroduction. And, and in, in there, there was, there was one paragraph where she specifically addressed the concern of a pileup because of the terrain in which we run, uh, that that was certainly possible. But for the last eight years now, we've lost between thirty and $50,000 a year to attacks from wolves. And sometimes the, the value of the sheep increases and decreases, uh, uh, but most of it is, is, has been pretty stable and, and the number fluctuates more because of the numbers that have been killed each year. You must be, as a rancher and caring for your livestock, just like I'm in the livestock business also, you must be absolutely, uh, you feel like nobody's on your side. When you have the environmentalists take all the uh, leads in, in the various stories, they get all the press, they seem to get all the advantages, they come out and they say, well, uh, put up flags and make noise and scare the wolves away, don't shoot them. You must be really uh, ready to throw your hands up in the air and say, my goodness, what protection do we have left to try to keep our livestock business growing and trying to make a profit? Oh, it is. It's an absolute killer for us. You know, we we do all of those things. We we have the guard dogs, and we've. I think now this year total is is twenty four dead guard dogs that we've had oh, over my. the last uh, uh, seven years from the wolves, and and our guard dogs are are starting to become ineffective uh, when the wolves come the guard dogs perceive that there's a problem and instead of going after the wolves they usually uh, head towards the middle of the band for their own protection anymore so uh, we've tried all of those things and and you know one of the big misnomers is that is that we get compensated for any losses well when the when the first when the program was first initiated, the Defenders of Wildlife said that they would have a compensation program. But as soon as those the wolves were delisted, that all went away. The federal government had a couple of appropriations that was spread around between ten different states that was supposed to pay for for uh, uh, depredation, but literally those ended up being pennies on the dollar and the verification if if you don't get up there within a day or so uh, and if any other animal has come in to to prey on the carcasses like birds or coyotes or bears or anything and or even our own guard dogs or sheep dogs uh, they destroy the evidence and then when when uh, the officials come up to make the verification they can so that compensation program has always been a joke to us. All right, and it's uh, and and we do we are so frustrated, and the anxiety level gets so high because a wolf will attack, and then it'll be gone for a few days, and then they'll come back, and you never know when they're going to be there, and you're just living on the edge all the time, and and our poor sheepherders are putting in 24-hour days trying to protect those animals, and it's 
it's just an impossible situation. All right, we have a caller with a question for you, Jeff. Stand by. Go ahead, caller, quickly, please. Okay, the introduction of the wolves was a terrible idea. It isn't even the same wolf that was here before. But the question I have is, are there any dogs or perhaps crosses between wolves and dogs that you could put out there that would be a match for the, the wolf pack? It's a good there question. An out there. I mean, we had a dog that was a cross that had amazingly sharp teeth and was big. So I'll, I'll, I appreciate that. I'll, I'll have him answer that on the air. Uh, Jeff, <laughs> in, in, just in case you didn't hear the question, I'll repeat it again. Uh, a good question. Is there a breed of dog or a crossbreed of dog that absolutely can be controlled by mankind but yet would be a very terrorist activity against the wolves that they would be afraid of? You know, I'm not aware, but I have been approached by a... a, a a dog, a breed called the Bose, and uh, and I think it's used in in Europe. Uh, you know, our major concern is that dog then become a predator too, because yep. the, the Pyrenees, the Great Pyrenees guard dogs that we use, uh, they'll bond with the sheep. They stay right with the sheep, and these some of these other dogs, uh, they they will go after the wolves. Okay. But, but they won't stay with the sheep. And so they end up going with the sheep herder uh, back to his teepee or, or his camp or whatever, and then the sheep are left unprotected. So that's why we've relied so heavily on the Great Pyrenees. Well, what is the answer, though, Jeff? I mean, here you are losing approximately $50,000 a year, and right now with the economy that we have, nobody wants to lose one red cent. But what is the answer? The environmentalists are keep pushing for bigger numbers, no hunting of wolves. They think that absolutely these, these wolves are sacrosanct and they can't be touched. What's the answer to keep you in business? Well, I, I don't know with our uh, Endangered Species Act that... That we're going to be to that we're ever going to be able to uh, to survive with with these losses. And to be quite frank about it, Zeb, I'm we're considering uh, reductions in numbers now. And and to me, that's a real heartbreak because that just kind of throws up the, the white flag and and says the environmentalists won. They got us off our land. And I have no interest in raising livestock for a prey base for any predator. I'm in the business to feed a hungry nation and a hungry world. And, it, and sometime, somewhere, we've got to find a balance between these, these sensible environmental groups and, and, and livestock and agricultural interests, timber interests, mining interests that, that allow us to go forward and produce the things that, that this nation needs in order to survive. Yeah, but you know... As you, I don't have the answer you, on, on how we get that done, but the courts right now have certainly interjected... Uh, a, a good influence as to where we are today. You know as well as I do, though, Jeff, that the, this has changed every day, every month, every year since 1995. And when the reintroduction occurred, finally there was an agreement on 10 breeding pairs. And then they've changed the numbers, and they've always cried the blues back east of the Mississippi River so that the general public in this country would be against the ranchers and against the farmers and come down and then want to change and rewrite everything. How do you beat these people? people when they have the media and the general public on their side? I don't know, but we, we do go out, we do have our wool grower organizations, our cattle associations, uh, um, and we try to counter that. But there, there literally are people out there that have, I'll use the term, drank the Kool-Aid that, that think that uh, a wolf will only kill what it eats. And it and it and that is such a farce and so far out of whack. I mean, every time we get the wolves in our sheep, we'll have between five and twenty-eight heads killed, and and it's always in the middle of the night, and the, and they, it's just recreational killing, uh, and we just do our best to counter those people that say no that they never do recreational killing. We try to to influence people where we can 
um, through our affiliate organizations like the Farm Bureau and and uh, uh, with our friends in the Department of Agriculture that understand the situation. But but you're exactly right. In America, there's less than one percent of us that raise all the food, and uh, and 99 percent of us uh, consume that food, and. Uh, uh, there are people out there that simply want our production agriculture removed because they think it's a threat to them, and and uh, it just seems insane to me, and it and it's it's my blood boiling. But uh, we right now, Zeb, all I can say is we do the best we can do with with what we have, and and certainly instances like this help help bring the focus back back towards center. Let me ask you this question, and then I'll wrap things up, but I was reading a comment by Todd Grimm, uh, Idaho Director of the Federal Wildlife Services, and he said, quote, I can't believe how many wolves we've got in there. And when I read that, I thought, you know, I think the general public and the media have duped each other into thinking that we don't have as many numbers as we do. I bet you as a sheep herder and owner of a sheep company, you probably have much more uh, accurate numbers on wolves than the general public really perceives yes and and you know wildlife services is able to remove some of these animals and we've been doing that for the last uh, six or seven years in this country but they're they just flock back in there there are so many packs in that small area in which we run our our nine bands of sheep <laughs> that I don't think anybody has a clue how many wolves are back there because if if a couple are removed, there seem to be a couple more that just fill that void within a matter of just a couple of weeks and and they're everywhere anymore. When they first started, we had them in one band of sheep. We now have them in five different herds of sheep. They kill between four and five animals um, the the day after, they killed four animals in a different band of sheep, five animals in another one. In the band they killed the four, they also killed a Pyrenees guard dog. Uh, and and if, if we remove any of those animals, it's wildlife services or if our employees are able to get any of those animals, I'll guarantee you within a week or to that there will be a couple of more back in there to, to fill that void. And and it, it is so disgusting, and and, the, and, and no one seems to, uh, to take our word for anything, uh, but the numbers in Idaho are, are just incredibly large. And you can look at what's happened to our elk population. Mm-hmm. And look, go to the uh, National Park Service website and see what happened to the elk population in Yellowstone Park. These are just vicious killing animals, and it, it's just a heartbreak that we we were so blinded to bring the darn things back to us. But, you know, Jeff, final thought here, and as a state senator, I'm sure you're probably going to agree with me. This isn't just about the wolf issue. I think, honestly, it's about a control issue, and I think it's all a part of Agenda 21. And I'm not trying to sound like an extreme right-winger. I think it's a control issue to get you and I and other people in agriculture off the land. Would you agree with that summation? Oh, a hundred percent. You know, and if it, and if it's not a wolf, it's a sa- it's a sage grouse, and if it's not the sage grouse, it's a red band trout. It just, you know, no matter what, uh, it just keeps going and going and going. And these radical environmental groups with that agenda to get all the all the private uses off the public land, uh, it, it's just going to destroy this nation. Well, I want to say how much I appreciate your taking the time and the effort to come on our program this morning. And please know that you have a friend here anytime you want to put something on the air to publicize the plight of uh, not only the sheep owners, but also ranching in general. Please come back on the program. Senator Jeff Sidaway, thank you so much. Thank you. God bless. Thank you much. You imagine... Can you imagine being an owner of a sheep company and uh, you have your herder call you in the middle of the night and you've got uh, almost 200 sheep dead, dead, because of the wolves, and then along with horses 
and guard dogs. And you're supposed to sit back and say, hmm, oh well, just the cost of business, cost of doing business? Are you kidding me? I have stated since 1995 on this program, and I've had my very dear friend Jack Euler, who has probably uh, done more to protect Idaho from these killing machines than anybody else. Um, we've sat in the middle of this story since 1995 and said that the environmental movement is nothing more than control. And it is. It is. It's a way of moving all of us away from our own land. But I guarantee you one thing, I don't have the personality to sit there and allow my livestock, whether it's sheep, whether it's cattle, whether it might be one of my horses, to be mauled and killed just for the sake of killing. They don't want to eat them, they just want to kill. I couldn't stand there and let that happen. I'd like to shoot every damn one of them. Calls welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. This is just such a heinous crime against people that are trying to make an honest living, trying to support the economy of the state of Idaho, trying to pay for the schools, trying to support local businesses, and then you end up with almost 200 sheep dead because of these killer predators? Let's take a listen to MichaelRogersWeather.com update. Hi, everybody. Michael Rogers for MichaelRogersWeather.com. Start of a brand spanking new week of weather we haven't seen in a while. How about that? How about cool? Remember what cool used to feel like? C-O-O-L. Cool. What am I talking about? Well, you're looking for sunny clouds with a high of 87. That is cool. That is so cool. 62 for the overnight low. Enjoy the day. Enjoy the weather. Enjoy the cool. The only you got. Ah, boy, Michael, I appreciate it. MichaelRogersWeather.com. Thank you very much. Oh, man, that frustrates me about that story. I've got a picture right here in front of me of literally the pile, the pile of dead sheep. How disgusting. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Center. As a matter of fact, I'm headed there right after I get off the air. Uh huh. And they've got the best in brake service. They've got the best in tires. They've got the best in front end alignments. They've got the best in shocks and struts. The best in batteries. The best in service to you. They care about you and your safe driving. Stop in and visit with any one of the seven locations today. Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Lane and Rupert, John on Pauline, and Randy on Overland and Burley. Talk to them about the best doggone tires you could put on your car. All the different tread designs, all the different types of driving. Talk to them about your driving safety. They know, and they can help you. Your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. You stop in and see them today. All right, I still got time for some call. I got flies in this room that are driving me nuts, 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 and I'm trying to kill them with my fly swatter, and evidently at my older age, I'm not as quick as I thought I was or should be. Many of them have evaded my extra-large fly swatter, and some of them haven't, but some of them have. I've never seen the flies come in like they have in the last 48 hours. Calls are welcome and appreciated. 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Tomorrow is going to be an interesting day. Why? Because I haven't got anybody lined up for tomorrow. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Good morning. You're on the air. Zeb, uh, that was a very good interview to just sit and listen to. But it makes my blood boil also. But it takes me back to 1991 when we brought a biologist from uh, British Columbia down here uh, who had 40 years of predator-prey relationship studies with uh, wolves and elk, wolves and bighorn sheep, wolves and caribou and wolves and moose and this man uh, had this experience and he told me he says i watched a herd of 100,000 caribou go extinct as a result of predation by these wolves and yet we brought him down to a fish and game commission meeting in mccall and he told the Fish and Game Commission and the Fish and Game 
and everybody else that was there, what was going to happen to our elk herds and what was going to happen to um, the sheep and the cattle that were on the range. And yet, look where we're at today. I mean, we're getting farther in the hole every day. Absolutely. And people need to wake up. Absolutely. And see what is going on? I could not agree more that we're putting ourselves back into the same scenario as what happened a hundred years ago to where we're being overwrought with these killers and these predators. Jack Oiler, my dear friend, God bless you. I hope you're feeling better. And i got to run to the news right now, but thank you for your call, and I'll be in touch with you. Okay, buddy? Okay. Sure. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Uh, anyway, we'll see you tomorrow morning at 8.06. Zeb at the ranch. And the way things were, the way things ought to be. Have a great day. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow morning.